man, he said, it, that, it'll run, you know, in, in ankle-deep water. Wow. Said, well, hell, so me and a buddy of mine, we went out there and tested on the river. There's a couple sandbars at the mouth of the river, pretty mm-hmm. shallow. So we're running across, and we see seagulls standing there. And he said, oh, I don't know if I'd go that. He said, guy told me it'd run in ankle-deep water, and we beat Ooh. that son of a bitch. Welcome back to another episode of Fishing After Dark with the beard and the badge. Go ahead and get that ASMR in there. People really like that, Daryl, on the internet when you make sounds with like you're drinking a drink or like tapping on something. Yeah, yeah do, do it, bad. <laughs> like Morse code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get me out of here. Welcome back to another episode, folks. I already said Fishing After Dark with the Beard and the Badge, but we have the main man, Mr. Daryl, neighbor Daryl. As you guys have seen in the videos a million times, really glad to have you back, man. It's good, good to have uh, you back. Good to be glad, here. Glad yeah. Here. Glad um, you're here, Daryl. The show. Yeah, I love it when y'all sit over there together. It's actually, I know. it's I my favorite. I don't get to see him once every six weeks now. I know. Well, he's he's abandoned us all. It's I okay. Know, yeah. <laughs> Once he does well, man, he's out of here. Yeah, yeah. Gone. Like, you know. like movie stars. Buys, yeah. a, buys a new <laughs> and says, man, yeah. forget you. I don't even know if that video is out yet. So uh, if, it, if it's not, we'll, uh, we'll bleep, bleep it, it or yeah. something. Yeah. Doubt it. Say like Daryl who? <laughs> the show, as always, is brought to you guys by Carl's Bait and Tackle, a.k.a. ShopCarls.com, the Internet's local tackle shop daryl what is your favorite fishing lure of all time like not brand specific but like what's your favorite just type of lure to throw if you had to go out and catch a fish right now not live bait like an artificial lure. a rubber worm a worm yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the good thing about carl's the rubber worms are on sale <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're on are. sale right now 30 yeah, percent off yeah. especially if you're a carl's club member yeah, so i can fish rubber worm all day long mm. you're not I'm, wrong about that yeah. i prefer top water like what's the hit oh man it's, there's nothing more exciting meat, i'm using rubber worm yeah. yeah if you're gonna if you have one lure to catch a fish to save your life you're gonna throw a oh, worm. Yeah, i think yeah. anybody mm. would survival kit i'm gonna have a bag of rubber worms with me yep probably some live ones too because you can't beat a live worm either oh, i know yeah yeah, no, top water is by far my favorite because it's just so damn exciting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So exciting. Yeah. I mean, if I was surviving with Daryl, I'd have a bag of rubbers, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, rubber worms. Yeah, rubber worms. Yeah, yeah. I knew what yeah. you meant. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. Right, right, right. Survival, yeah. man. You know what's funny, Daryl? We were just talking <laughs> on the last We don't want to kill any rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> I was, we were just talking on the last podcast about law enforcement. You know, I had a crazy story that involved the SWAT team, and we've had you on here before. And if you guys don't know, Daryl is a retired game warden of how many years? I always forget. 32 plus. Yeah. 32. 32. Good Lord. Um, in the state of Florida, of course. Right. Now, we've had him on once before. Everybody loved that podcast. Then we did a second one, which me and Badge think was the best podcast we've ever made, right? I, Can we say that? I think so. It was Most of the time, we're just – you know, trying to be funny, cutting yeah. up. And that one had a little bit of realness to it. Right. A little sustenance. Daryl told some stories that are just insane. And then your boy, Lojo, here, somehow I deleted it. I have no idea what I did. I actually think it was my daughter. Or at least I'm going to just blame her because yeah. she's four and she doesn't care. <laughs> That's what matters. But she was messing with my computer one day when I wasn't in there. And she was, you know, they'll just hit buttons and stuff. But the thing is, on <laughs> That's that the way computer. I do too. Don't, <laughs> don't blame her. I'm the same way. <laughs> but the problem is, on these modern computers, there's shortcuts. So you could hit like, control c and it could just grab a folder and delete it you know what i mean because there's there's keyboard shortcuts and she doesn't know that so i think she did but i could have deleted it but unfortunately we lost that footage it's no longer in existence so we had to get daryl back on to hopefully recapture some of the magic and as famous i was it took him six months to book me (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly back like october it was a long time we were on our camping trip in november that's right you deleted it that's right yes that god that was that camping trip was what four months ago Five months yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. How could it be that long ago? Time January, is just February. flying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You guys don't know. We spent like, well, I didn't spend, I spent like a week total out there, but you guys were out there almost the whole month in November. Well, yeah, some camping. of my kin folks were out there the whole month. I come home on the rainy days because I'm too old <laughs> to worry about a leak in a tent. It was getting cold out there, oh, too, it, on it, some it, of those nights. Uh, yeah, it was cold a lot of nights. Yeah. I tell you what, it, yeah, it was below freezing on many, but it was nice. It, it was you know, nice. You know, the main reason we haven't had you on is because you've been hunting like, yeah, you've been Crazy. busy. You've been in the woods. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I've been doing a lot of hunting this year. Which is good. I say I hunt a lot. I mean, I've just I, I got a lot of people coming to my house hunting, so I'm basically cooking, cleaning, and <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you, grinding up deer meat right. for them and all that. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, you made some good deer meat this year. Oh, dude, yeah. man. Yeah, you process some for me, and it's just the best. It's just the best meat I've ever had. It is good. God, so good. <laughs> so, what is what is like your secret when processing a deer? I like to cook. You know, when you care, care to these butchers that are doing 
500 deer a week. They don't take time with it. Sure. I cut out anything that ain't red meat. I don't care what it is. If it's fat, because deer fat ain't, ain't worth a darn. Right. Um, gristle, any little white connective tissues, I cut away all that. And then I add beef fat back to it that I buy uh, the beef fat. And I like when I do a hamburger meat, I try to put 20, 25% beef fat. Right. And then if I'm going to do like them um, meatballs, I'll do pork. I'll mix it with pork. Okay. So kind of like matching the fat to what you're using that meat, like trying to imitate it. Yeah. 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 No, that's, I think that's the key. Yeah. We make meatballs, Salisbury steak, summer sausage, you know, uh, Polish sausage, uh, smoked sausage, jalapeno cheese. It's all good too. Every single thing he just said is so good. I've had them. 20 different things. I probably ground up 500 pounds of deer meat this year, but that's for my son, my daughter-in-law, yeah. my other son, you. You had a lot of people bringing Neil deer. Neil and Morgan, yeah, and then yeah. Neil and Morgan killed several hogs he brought to me. Yep. You yep. basically have a processing <laughs> shop <laughs> right. in your house. Yeah, yeah, basically they use me because I'm free. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you could have made a lot of money this yeah, year if yeah. you were charging yeah. people for this. Yeah. But, yeah, the meat you made me was just is incredible. Um, dude, I've switched to deer meat for hamburgers and, like, tacos. You know, general yeah. stuff that you use ground beef for? I've made the complete switch. I swear to God, it's better. You know, like some people will say, oh, you can't tell the difference. But oh, yeah. to me, it's just better in general. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can tell. I mean, you can – if if I sit down to a bowl of chili or – now, if it's real spicy or something, like that, but even spaghetti, lasagna, even yeah. Morgan. We sit down Morgan said, this is made with deer meat, ain't it? I mean, yeah. I'm so, sure he can tell. He's had yeah, quite a bit more deer. Too. Both my boys, they never had beef because when I was – uh, a game warden there, and I was hunting down there. And I had a friend of mine who was a butcher, and he ground up my deer for free because I laid a lot of block for him, done his roofs and all, and done, built some ponds for him. So he'd grind up my deer, and I'd kill 15, 20 deer a year sometimes. Mm. And he made everything sausage, every kind of sausage you could think of, hamburger meat, just anything you could think of. And my boys, if they eat beef, it was at McDonald's, it wasn't at my house. Right. They probably graduated <laughs> wow. from high school before they ever had any beef at my house. That's wild. That is crazy. It's so interchangeable, though. Have you, You've had a lot of deer meat, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. What Especially is, when I you, got married. Yeah? Yeah. Do you, like, prefer it to beef now? I prefer the taste of beef. Yeah. But I think deer meat is way better for you. Well, dude, I mean, just we, used I, to, we talked know. about this when we were hunting and stuff. At least me. I love the fact that how we captured that meat. I mean, you go out, it's organ- It's as organic as organic gets. I and mean, this was a wild animal five minutes ago. Now it's dead, and you you get straight to processing. Yeah, and there ain't been no hormones or shots Nothing. or all that, you know, yeah. super feed. And, yeah. So that's uh, one of the things I love about it is I feel like it nourishes me better because it's real. You know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff you buy in the grocery store, you don't know where that meat's coming from a lot of times. You don't know what it's pumped full of. You see some of these chicken parts, man, and they're massive. And you're <laughs> yeah. just thinking chicken's are not that yeah. big, dude. I yeah. We have chickens. They're not yeah. that big. I've seen them on sale today. Chicken breast half the size of a basket. I know. They it's chicken wild. Ain't that big. That ain't right. No. Like, no. What do you think they put in it? Is it just like water or just hormones to make them Steroids grow bigger? All, Steroids. Yeah. That's crazy. That can't be good to eat. And they say that's a lot of the problem with people gaining weight now. Is because all this stuff they're eating is pumped up with steroids and weight inducing your porks that way, your beefs that way. They're shut up in pens. Yeah, but, uh, it's not seen, it's not humane. Have you no. seen the chickens that are full of steroids? Like actually seen them alive? Like they no. will get to a size faster than they should. Oh, oh yeah. So God. when they're like a preteen of a chicken, yeah, <laughs> they'll be so fat they can't move. I've heard about that they can't walk. And then you just pick it yeah. up by the head, and it breaks the neck because it's so heavy. They wow. get big, but now they these chickens you know, around here there's chicken houses everywhere. But these chickens here, most of them are they got anywhere from thirty five day chickens to forty in the mid forties. I think is your preferred thing. Yeah. Now we've got chickens that are twenty one days old. Right, and they're nowhere near that size. They're that tall. Can they're you imagine tiny. having them for ten more days? And then eat And them going to Kentucky Fried Chicken to be cooked? It don't make any sense, no, man. No, don't. Now, this is my second year of raising chickens, and they don't get big that quick. So, nah. if you're eating them after 40 days, you're pumping them full of something. Yeah, 45 right. days is yeah. when they'll butcher them. And they'll, they'll average <laughs> six to seven pounds. That's a big chicken. Yeah, it takes 40 20, days. Yeah, our, our chickens right now ain't. They take ten to make a pound. Right? I know it's incredible, man. It's it but yeah, it's like that's why I love the de- the whole deer thing this year. I've gotten into it so much because it's like it just hit me over the head one day. It's like this is the purest way of getting meat. It yeah. is. It, it, you know, you can buy. Your, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with buying meat because we all do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you know, just helps supplement what you already have. But if you only had one way to eat meat, that this is the right way: hunting it, processing it yourself. I mean, it's just like. And another thing so about pure. the deer is is how it's processed. I back years ago they used to run deer with dogs, and they'd shoot a deer that morning, and throw them on the on the on the, on the uh, dog box, and ride around all day long. 
it'd be 12, 14, 15 hours later before they cleaned it, you know, in Florida. Yeah, it's talking about 100 hot. degree heat. Ooh. Well, you you take a pack of hamburger meat, throw it in your dog box, live for 12 hours and cook it and see if you like it. Oof. And so yeah. that's why a lot of people don't like deer meat because it, yeah. it might have been processed right, but there ain't nothing you do with rotten deer. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, can, I can dress it up all I want, but there's no way I can fix a rotten deer. You've told yeah. me that before. A lot of people get... They, they have deer and it's bad the first time because mm-hmm. somebody didn't know how to prepare it or preserve it or keep or cook it, and it just turns people off to deer meat. Oh, they yeah. just think it tastes nasty. Yeah. I, I was that same person. I've never even really had deer, but I just kind of thought, ah, it's gamey, it's probably not that good. But now the stuff he's made yeah. and the stuff that I've gotten from that other deer processor down the road, I mean, it's yeah. great. It's amazing. Yeah. First time I ever had lamb was the same way. Me and my ex-wife went to a restaurant and ordered lamb chops at some old Greek restaurant. They had a few, and it was strong. Bad strong. I mean, I couldn't hardly stand it. Yeah. And it turned me off from lamb. And then we were on a cruise ship, and I got some lamb chops. And, oh, my God, wow. that's probably my favorite meat in the world. It's all in how you prepare it. Yeah, and the only reason I ordered on the cruise ship, it was free. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have paid for it. <laughs> Man, lamb chops, that sounds so good. I'm so yeah. hungry right now. I am. <laughs> we could just go down this food road right now if we wanted to. I'm so hungry. Yeah. We've been going hard all day. We came from a pheasant shoot this morning, actually, yep, yep, yep. which you were nice enough to invite us to and kind of set that whole thing up. Man, that was a freaking blast. Man. It was a blast. And we set the record for we that We did. Guy. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. did. I forgot about set that. Set the record for his uh, pheasant hunt. By one bird. By one bird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Man, I, I by the end of it, I was so into it. In the first couple barrels, I was still getting, getting used to it. I never knew what a pheasant was mm-hmm. until today you know I've, I've seen you clean some but yeah it was a whole lot of fun how many did you kill today Baz? you think i know we hit a bunch because these birds are a lot harder than you think they're they tough. are yeah they're, they're tough i would say over i would say five or six that you dropped or shot oh he shot I dropped. Now he dropped you dropped two or three with me yeah, so you probably dropped six or seven. I might have dropped more. I might have dropped closer to ten. And, See, I yeah, think then, I did too. And then they're close to the end now. When you to sitting to the right, I mean, Allie got like three of your birds at one time. You were in that. You were in a zone at that. That point. was yeah. fun, dude. Yeah, probably, I wasn't even shooting anymore. I was just letting you shoot. Yeah. You were just hammering. You killed them. eight plus birds, ain't no doubt. Because I probably killed eight. I mean, we all averaged on the field that we picked up. Everybody averaged seven to eight birds each. Right. Okay, yeah, well, that's yeah. I mean, that was the average for the field, and I think we done. Is, is good or better than anybody else. I don't think anybody's yeah. done any better than us. Yeah. It's such a so. unique way of hunting. So It is. It is, and it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And we also thought there was a bird launcher in that little building. <laughs> if you guys have ever been on a pheasant hunt, it's just a bunch of dudes in a field with hay bales everywhere circling this little shack that these birds come flying out of. But we thought there was a launcher, but it wasn't. There was just some dudes in there throwing yeah. the birds yeah. up in the air. It's sustainable farming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It was crazy, though, man. The longer we shot, I guess it's like that with anything, but you start getting the timing down. You start understanding exactly. how they fly. And we were just the, – the last three or four uh, hay bales, me and you were just murdered. Yeah, that yeah. last round, you were killing them like crazy. Yeah. yeah y'all were, I think yeah. I got one the last round. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was a good time, though. We gotta, we're going to clean them jokers up. That content will be on Uncut Outdoors, but – yeah, a lot of fun there. We had a bunch of people in our crew. I was wondering all day today, I was like, either either the people, the rest of the people out there, because there was like, what, 25 people total? Yeah, 24, yeah. So we represented, what, six, seven people? Yeah, 25%. Yeah, yeah 25%. <laughs> and we were all hooting and hollering when somebody would hit one from our group. We'd be yelling across the yeah. way. Yeah. I didn't hear anybody else talking. So I figured either they loved us out there today or they hated us. I yeah. don't know which well, one it I was. Think when he was naming out the assignments for the hay bales, most of them were by themselves. Yeah. So they didn't know anybody else. Oh, okay. uh, oh, so some people paired up might not have known each right. other. Right. Oh, I didn't know right. that. Yeah, and, that's and there funny. wasn't anybody that had two hay bales together. Right. So there wasn't any groups that had more than one hay bale. So oh, even okay. Groups, that's why nobody was talking. It'd be like me and you just sitting beside each other. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. That, that makes a lot more yeah. sense because nobody was, like, getting excited or anything when they'd shoot a bird, and yeah. we were just getting hyped when yeah. we were shooting yeah. birds. Yeah, because, I mean, I was hitting, I said, was that badge or low? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were getting crazy yeah, out there. Yeah, we were hollering. We were out there with Cade, the, the Cade. 14 year old, yeah. he shot a couple. He did yeah, okay. He did. His his gun messed up though, right? Yeah, he he had to get use one of mine. I brought a couple spares, and then, but I had to use him on it. And he shot a couple, but Cade's bad about claiming everything he shoots at. Yeah, Cade shot some <laughs> 200 yards away. If, yeah. it, if it happened to fall when he shot, he he hit it. That's a smart man right there, just oh, claiming yeah. that they're falling mm-hmm. out of the sky. He's like, yep, that was mine. That was mine. Yeah, that was mine. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, bro, you're not even shooting anymore. Yeah, that he, can't be yours. I, I know he was sitting with me. He killed several with me. He's pretty good. Yeah, shot. he did. I, yeah. I was watching him a couple yeah. times, and he did. Be working good. alley sometimes, I, and I couldn't shoot because I had to put her back on a leash for she wouldn't. I was worried about her breaking and getting shot by somebody. So, yeah, uh, dude, she almost got shot. Well, well, not almost got shot, but she was tailing a bird out into the woods, and people were shooting. I, I was really nervous. I'm sure and you that's were too. One I didn't want her to go after. She had a retrieve. 
she was coming back and they shot that bird and she spit that bird out and went after that other that's one. That's right. And, and people that's were when shooting I, at yeah, it. Yeah, and that's when I went to hollering at her. That's why Man. I started not, on them long ones that we didn't kill. Yeah. I started waiting until the end to turn her loose for that wouldn't happen again. Speaking yeah. of almost getting shot, there was a, a young lady <laughs> running around <laughs> oh on a four wheeler. Jesus Christ. I mean, okay. And, and, they, they know what they're doing out there. It was a great place. They were yeah. super organized. I think this was just one of those rare occasions where somebody was just in a bad spot. Yeah, she didn't think. Yeah. But there was a, a young lady behind us, and she almost got shot twice. Because she, was, she was. Yeah, she was in the woods getting a bird. She was in the woods getting birds, but but she's not. I don't think she was supposed to be while no, we're shooting. Normally, there's four hay bales they park behind. If they go over the fence, they've got somebody there to retrieve them over right. the fence. I think what, and she's supposed to stay back there till he blows the whistle. Right, until there's a break. Yeah, he, blows, a break. he actually blows the air horn. Yeah. And then she comes down there and shoots any crippled birds and picks up the wounds. I think what happened, she's seen a wounded bird run down the road. Uh -huh. And she got excited and went to chasing it. Yeah. And it so just so happened, we've been shooting behind us all day. Right. Well, yeah. we could, you know, there's nothing behind well, us. That's one of the rules is once yeah. the bird, especially if it's a low bird, go ahead and let it get behind you, get you and then you. swing and shoot. So yeah. that's completely what you're supposed to do. Yeah, we were doing like we're supposed to. Then you turn around and shoot, and all of a sudden you see an orange vest. Yeah, there's so where'd a person. That, where'd that come from? And I told her, well, after y'all done it. Yeah, I Andrew, said, too, almost shot her. Well, not almost shot her, but shot a bird within 10 yards of where yeah, she right. was standing. And I told her, I said, you better get on back behind the And you did, bells. you did. And yeah. then about two birds later, I swing around there and shoot and, and, and shot. she was still there. And she you probably was, shot within five feet of where and she and was. And she hustled on back then. <laughs> Thank God you're a good shot <laughs> because, oh, my God, it's, that was really oh, it, scary. It bothered me real bad. But, I mean, yeah. she had no business being back there. Really, right. But, I mean, I bet she won't do that again. I talked to her afterwards when we were eating. I was just like, I was like, how close were those shots to you? And she was like, they were very close. I yeah. was like. I, told, I apologize to her. Man, I'm sorry. I said, you know, I, I'm safe as they come. Right, yeah. But when you're not, when nobody's supposed to be behind you, nobody's yeah. supposed to be behind you. And when yeah. you've been shooting behind you all day, like you and said. You, I don't have time to look over 40 acres and see where everybody's at before I pull the trigger. Everybody's right. supposed to be in you're, the same you're spot. You're keyed in on a bird, and once it's behind you, it's supposed to be safe. Yeah, and there was a wood line, too, like There's a little a bit line. of brush. So it was yeah. like she was camouflaged. Yeah, she yeah. was kind of hidden. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. hidden from where you guys were sitting, especially. You yeah. couldn't oh, yeah. see her. No, and it yeah. was just a bad, it was a bad deal on her part. And she, I think she real. I don't think that happened again. Yeah. No, no, I, no. I don't think so either. That, I think she, that was her shoot. first time. Usually he's got a guy back there with a dog. And that was her first time doing it, as far yeah. as I know. And she just made it. Before. She didn't think, you know, you just it's one of the things you don't think. Thank yeah. God, nothing, nothing bad oh, happened. Yeah. We made it out of there alive. Yeah. But yeah. it could have been really bad. I mean, that's one of the things. Yeah. I mean, well, we shoot bird shots. I mean, probably wouldn't have killed her. You know, yeah, probably wouldn't but, have killed her. It, it would have would been have, bad though. No, she'd have been pick, getting picked out of her though. Oof. Yeah. Speaking mm. of that, did you get hit with any spare BBs today? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think everybody did. <laughs> Dude, I caught one in the chest, <laughs> I did. I did. and man, it freaking hurt. It felt like a paintball hit me. I was like, it, oh. It stings. Damn. That's why I wear shooting glasses. And I always yeah. bring enough for everybody to shoot because I don't let nobody shoot. If they go with me, they're wearing glasses, uh, protective glasses. That's a good, that's good. That's good. I'm really weird about my eyes, too. I, I, yeah. That's the worst thing in the world for me is like to be blinded. That's one yeah. of my ultimate I, fears. So I can't stand even get a piece of dirt in my eye. Yeah, yeah same. same. Damn sure I don't want a number four bird shot. <laughs> that's the damn truth. <laughs> Guys, it's springtime. Bass are bedding. It is a time to get out there and break a PB. I know when it comes to fishing, you want to shop on a budget. That is why we're partnering with Shop Carls. If you become a Carls Club member, you'll be able to save up to 30% on your favorite baits every single month, as well as rods, reels, pretty much everything. They're growing their arsenal in every realm of fishing as we're speaking right now. Link is in the description. Go to shopcarls.com. Check out what they have. You won't be disappointed. Back to the pod. So, Daryl, so we lost that one podcast. And, I mean, we talked about we – I can't even recap what we talked about because you talked about so much. You gave us a bunch of undercover stories. I, I think from the first podcast we did, I don't think we ever talked about your undercover job right. with the state, you know, because we all know you're a game warden. I think most of the people at home kind of know what a game warden does, but I don't think anybody knows that game wardens go undercover, you know. Now, I don't want you to, like, repeat – all the stories you gave us last time. Yeah, I don't remember what I told you last time. <laughs> that would be lame. <laughs> but being undercover, you worked undercover for what, like two, three years or something? Well, like I worked that? basically, well, it wasn't really undercover. I wasn't full time undercover. I okay. worked with another investigator who was plain clothes. Okay. And so uh, they call it undercover. We basically yeah. weren't, weren't plain clothes. And we you know, would, would, we'd, we'd get complaints from uh, usually commercial stuff. Yeah. So it'd be somebody buying illegal fish. Buying illegal deer. Like restaurants or meat, Rest, meat yeah, places? Yeah, mainly restaurants, okay. uh, seafood stores, uh, fish stores that sold. And then they would send us in there, and we would actually get get the fish and then go see if they'd buy them from us. 
because we didn't have a license or we were shooting deer at night and see if they'd buy it. You know, you yeah. can't buy a deer buying deer from us. Right. So uh, everything they would generate would be off of a complaint. And then okay. it had to run through Tallahassee. But we had pretty good leeway back then of what we could do. And what we could oh, do. I would imagine so. I mean, I've heard stories just like general undercover or plain close operations. And, I mean, you kind of have to do some shady stuff just to even – find yourself in that avenue you know talking to a shady restaurant owner who's yeah. trying to, who trying to buy illegal meat you kind of have to become that shady person if you will yeah, i mean so. if we're, we're going to sell him if, if we hear he's buying say undersized snapper well we got to go catch undersized snapper because we right. can't go buy undersized snapper from somebody so we go out there and we'll catch i mean we never one time caught a hundred undersized snapper right. you know and, and sold them or you know somebody if they're if he's buying deer that was shot at night well we got to go shoot the deer at night yeah you can't bring a deer in at nine o'clock stiff Right. You know, so I mean, uh, got to got to fit the part. You got to play the it, part. Exactly. So like your your bosses or whoever was in charge of these operations, did they actually like lay out you know do's and don'ts? Like you can kind of push the law here, but you can't do this. Or what not, was like the restraint? You not know? when I now earlier on they did when they first started with this stuff back in the seventies and eighties because kind of the judge laid out what you could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. You weren't allowed to, to actually shoot a deer. I okay. mean, if you was with back then, they'd send somebody with a group of outlaws. And what you would do is they would intentionally miss deer, and they say, "Give me the damn gun. You can't hit anything." Yeah. But when I was in it, it was we. Oh my gosh, we, that's scary. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, we we shot all. We sold alligators. We killed alligators. Wow. You know, we killed deer. I mean, we shot like forty something deer at night. That. Wow. And sold them to different. Uh, yeah. Mainly, uh, it was an Asian market, and they were they were resell them. They would divide them up and resell them. Yeah. And then we killed uh, and catching fish. I'm talking about piles of mullet. Yeah. Sell them all over to so restaurants that was buying them from us. From unlicensed people. What would you do with the money that was made? We turned it in. We had to photograph the money. Serial yeah. numbers on that was a dang. Pain. That's oh a pain God, to photograph the money. Oh, oh my yeah. God, one, one bill at a time. Well, you'd or get just, a group of them. Okay, I was about to say yeah. Jesus. And document serial numbers and all that. I'm about Good getting fired God. over a dollar bill. That's you know the I mean? damn truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hated dealing with the money. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I'm lying. sure a lot of undercover guys. I mean, let's be honest. In any law enforcement, it's tempting to take that money. You know what I mean? It so, probably it never was tempting to me, but I can see where it could be. And you're talking about piddly. I mean, you'd sell a hundred dollars worth of fish. Right. I'm not losing. I'm not losing a. Sixty thousand dollars retirement. Yeah, dude, bucks. no kidding. Yeah, well, but some I, people just don't care about that kind of stuff. But I can yeah. see where somebody it, they were stupid. Yeah. Say, well, hey, I'm gonna buy me a, you know, I'm on way home. I'm gonna buy me a couple <laughs> of six packs of beer with this money. Like some people start playing the outlaw in their mind because they're trying to be that undercover guy, but then they start actually doing the outlaw things that yeah. you're not supposed to see, do. See, luckily I didn't. I wouldn't. The boy I worked with, he was an investigator, and that was his, his captain was over us. He was in charge of the money. Yeah. So okay. He, he took the money with him, and then we'd go back. I said we'd, we'd photograph, then <clears throat> you know take a uh, take a picture of because a lot of times they'd, they'd write you a receipt, even though it was illegal. They'd still write you a receipt. <laughs> wow. Because that's, that's, that's just signing your own arrest warrant <laughs> because like, they want to duck it off their taxes. Oh my you know, gosh! That that talk about stupid. That's yeah. if you're going to buy something illegally, you can't give the illegal. You can't give the drug dealer a receipt when you buy an ounce <laughs> of crack. You know what I mean? Like you can't do yeah. that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So but, but alligator we, fish. That sounds like um, quite deer. possibly the coolest job I've ever done. Deer. Know. And that was pretty, you know, we weren't allowed to shoot any, like a bear or anything like that. We had one of it, and these guys wanted some bear because oh they used a bear gallbladder in making some kind of uh, uh, whiskey or wine or something. And it's supposed really? to make it some kind of religious thing. If you oh drink with that God. in there. And, um, what and kind we, of bear? Like a black bear? Yeah. There's a lot of bear in Florida. People don't realize yeah, that. And we actually had permission if we could have found a roadkill bear. Fresh roadkill. We was going to carry. Try that. to try yeah, to get him. Got to try to get him. Wow. But we weren't allowed to shoot. And I never seen one to shoot anyhow. But I would. Yeah. I would have shot one if I had permission. To shoot. We, they weren't going to give us permission. To shoot bear, yeah. But. There's a lot more like central Florida than there is north. Oh yeah, north yes. Florida. Down where Neil's at in Palaka, they're oh, they're yeah. overrun with bears. Oh yeah, my parents live in Okeechobee. And there's a road out there. It's like 30 miles long through like the Everglades, basically. And it's yeah. like there's a sign that has like bear crossing. Yeah. It's like oh, a bear yeah. crossing sign. Like oh my god. Now Walton County, I worked there 30 something years, and I've probably seen three or four bears right. in 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what was Okaloosa County had quite a quite yeah. a get run over because it had Eglin there. Wow, that's good. Can you imagine hitting a bear? Yeah. Man, like everybody's hit oh, a deer. I'll tell you a good story. One of my, one of my uh, original sergeants, he, he got called out on a complaint because back then we didn't have a whole lot of bears. And some people think, didn't think we had any bears in yeah. Walton County. So he got called out about 1 o'clock in the morning, nasty weather, raining that somebody had run over a bear on 285 on Eglin. Mm -hmm. So he gets there, and, uh, you know, how patrol's working the wreck and all, and it's raining, so you can't really tell much. And he gets looking, and, and he looks, he don't, don't see anything. So uh, they say, ah, I, I run over a bear. So 
um, he goes on back to the house, which is probably 30 minutes back to the house. About an hour later, they call him out again. Said, somebody's seen that crippled bear Ooh. on the side of the road. Okay. So he goes back, and he says, it's a friggin' dog. So he grabs his flashlight. He goes walking back in the woods, and, he, and we had a big old flashlight. He parts some palmetto bushes, and he swears a bear's mouth is that big around. That bear had crawled back there and was crippled up bad oh. and roared at him. <laughs> <laughs> and come towards him, he stuck that pistol in the bear's mouth and shot all six times in that bear's <laughs> mouth. Point blank range, that bear was crawling towards him because he was crippled oh up. Oh, my God. And he, after that, he was a firm believer there was bears in Walton County because <laughs> he thought it was a dog the whole time. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, that, Jeez. That's a movie scene and a half. Yeah. Can you imagine a bear crawling at you trying to just, <laughs> like, last-ditch effort yeah, to and survive? Yeah, he's pissed. Yeah, yeah he's pissed, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a 250-pound bear. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Jeez. Yeah, I went out there and helped him. We helped load him up. Because back then, every bear we got, they had to go uh, send to Tallahassee. They had to do hair samples and all oh, the yeah. DNA samples, tooth <laughs> samples. And, uh, boy, he was six hours later, he was shaking still. Uh, yeah, I would think you'd be would shaking be six years later yeah. after that one. Good Lord. Can you imagine shooting a bear at point blank range? Yeah, at night. After you. Yeah, at, at night. At night. Oh. And, and all your flashlight is showing is his mouth and teeth. Yeah, coming at you. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. If that bear wouldn't have been crippled, but He'd have been dead, it, yeah, yeah. or at least him. hurt bad. Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't have got his pistol out in time. <sighs> you know, that was crippled, he was able to get his pistol out in time. Jeez. So what, an old lady hit it, is what you said? Yeah, some but some woman hit I don't know if she's old or some not. Old, <laughs> I thought you said an old lady for some reason. I was just like, well, I you might imagine have, an old lady? Yeah, it was, it was some <laughs> woman that hit it on 285, and I would troll work the wreck. How bad was her car messed up? Jeez. I don't know that. Holy you know, they towed off this, like the this. You know, when Dave went out there then, he couldn't find any sign that, that a bear had been. It was yeah. drizzling rain and nasty. You know, so he, is, he thought it was a dog, and like some lady said it was a bear. Yeah, because yeah. that area allows dog hunting. So dogs get running around that stretch of the highway all the time. Dog, dog hunting, hunting, you mean like hunting with dogs? Yeah, yeah. hunting with dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah people, okay. yeah, people aban- abandoned. Not hunting dogs. Just yeah. I just didn't yeah. know. A ba- I was abandoned like, maybe. Dogs that was abandoned or they couldn't catch. The 80s. But, yeah. Right. Yeah, in the 80s, man, you never know what's going on back yeah. there. In the 80s, you shoot somebody's dog, it's about like shooting their wife. I mean, they, really? Yeah. You, you, man, that, they get serious over that. Yeah, I bet so. Yeah, there was people, I mean. We actually went to one a freaking knife fight that we had. <laughs> dog gunners got out there, and they, uh, my boss went over there, and it was um, the, somebody from the Audubon side. They was on property they weren't supposed to be in, and the, and somebody supposedly had shot their dog or something. Yeah, he got over there, and they done pulled their knives out, pocket <laughs> knives out. The we guys have about ready the to dog fight gunner, with knife. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you shot my dog, I think I'd be pretty be wanting to fight you. I yeah. worked. I worked construction with a guy he was kind of older and rougher and he told yeah. a story at lunch one time where he lived next to like a hunting club mm. and he had a dog that's all he had it was just him and his dog in like a trailer and it yeah. was just that was like his everything yeah and it went on that property one of the deer hunters shot the dog <laughs> and like on purpose or like thought it was a deer i don't know he yeah. shot the probably dog on purpose. yeah it's aggravating when you're deer yeah, hunting dogs probably come right and mess you up so he figured out it was who he goes over there and they were, like, in a group around a fire or whatever, and yeah. he's like, tell me who shot my dog, who shot my dog, all this. Yeah. Nobody would ste- step up. They all had hunting dogs as well. And he put out, like, feed one night. Mm-hmm. They all came and he shot all the dogs. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. And then dropped them all off. <sighs> yeah. Jeez. Man, we I don't have, know if that's, that's real or a, that's not, intense. but he said that. Yeah. yeah, when he said that, I was like, oh, my gosh, i got to find a new line of work. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in the late, God, in late, the late 80s and early 90s, um, your deer hunters in the early 80s, 70s, everybody hunted with dogs. Nobody yeah. sat in trees. I remember you telling there. me that, yeah. And then the, uh, when when people started buying land and started putting food plots and, and still hunting started becoming a big thing, there was a big clash between dog hunters and still hunters. And in North Florida, Florida, you had some pretty nasty dog hunters. They'd cut people's fences. They'd wait till somebody's at church, throw their dogs on the oh, fence, run it, run it off their property. So we started <laughs> working a lot of details, and we had lots and lots of problems. And then, then they made it against a lot of hunt from a road. Used to, you could sit in the middle of, of I-10 and wow. shoot a deer. So what they had the? A, yeah, <laughs> That's crazy. It was yeah, wild literally. Back you could then, sit on, on the right of way of I-10 and shoot a deer. And so they Jeez. made it against a lot where you couldn't hunt from right of ways. Yeah, and we started having a lot, and then we so we started working a lot of plain clothes details, you know, and and arresting dog hunters, and, and then it was it was just some there was for a couple of years that's all I did was answer dog complaints, you know, dogs on people property, and and then if 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 they got wind the landowner had called in a complaint, they'd go tack their driveway at night. Oh my gosh! Oh, it was, we had that. That was that was 
the worst of my career having to work them dog hunting. When, when was that? Like back in the early eighties, mid eighties? No, no, that would have been uh, real, real late eighties, maybe early nineties. Okay, that's jeez, that's like the wild west, man. Just yeah, people running and, dogs through properties and just oh, not yeah, giving a yeah, damn. And Northwest Florida. Now, still in Central Florida, they still do a lot of dog hunting. In Walton County, I don't know if there's any dog hunting left except on Eglin. Yeah, because now you got to have so many acres, you got to have permission. If your mm. dogs get on somebody else's property, they can write you a ticket. So okay. they pretty much wound up the dog. Hunting. Yeah, but you can't run a hound on. 40 acres of land. He ain't going right. to happen. You can't run him on 1,000. You can't run him on 5,000. You can't run a pack of hounds on, on 5,000 acres of land. They ain't going to stay really? on. And we had so much problem. Because Walton County had a lot of 40-acre landowners, 160-acre landowners. Mm. And people, you know, would, would like Neil would buy property, and they'd go to try to hunt, and dogs run through the property all day long. Well, you can't. You can't a deer ain't going to yeah. sit there on your food plot. No. Uh-uh. If they're, if they're, and, they run the, and they're shooting deer from the highway and, the, and your dirt roads. Um, I mean, they've literally stopped school buses. In the road to shoot it because they had a race going. You know, the races when the dogs are chasing the deer, uh, they've stopped the school bus because the deer's heading their way oh until they shoot the deer and then let God. the school bus go on. Jeez, that is literally <laughs> the Wild West with deer hunting. That's crazy. Dog hunting. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they had a terrible reputation up there. In Did West a lot Florida. of people get injured doing that? Like, it sounds like there could be a lot of accidental. Yeah, I accidental don't know. Shooting. I don't know. Well, I do know some accidental shootings, but not from them in the trucks. But they were dog hunters where they'd go in the woods to make a drive or something. Right. And they would hear bushes and shoot. And new, what's bad about that is usually family members. Because a lot of these dog hunting clubs, it was. You know, family, cousins, oh, all that. Golly. So most of the time when you had a shooting like that, it was they'd shot a cousin or nephew, brother, mm, sister, you know, father or whatever. Um, yeah. So it was, which that was a kind of a bad thing to work. And we used to have to work all the hunting accidents. The sheriff's department would come do, and if it wasn't a homicide, then they'd turn over to us and we'd work as a hunting accident. We had to yeah. report all of them. Wow. Um, How many of those do you think you got in your career, like accidental shootings just in general during hunting seasons? Uh, 20 plus. <sighs> Oof. Yeah. It doesn't surprise. Well, you work for thirty years, yeah. so that don't surprise me. That's actually not even that bad, I no. guess, because I've, you hear about it all the time about people getting accidentally shot. But dang, still, though, that's still a lot of like like hot, like people died twenty that died or no, just 20 probably out of them twenty eight or ten died. Okay, all right. Well, that's over thirty years. I yeah. guess that's it but still I, sucks, but it, you know, I've told you this before, and I think it was on that last one that got deleted. Yeah, the worst hunting accident ever. My, well, you was, know what? Let me let me reset these, and we'll okay. do that real quick. Let me yeah. reset these. That's perfect. The the one of the, the I didn't work it. The strangest hunting accident that I've ever heard of was I had a lot of bosses through my thirty something years. He's probably about my third boss. Me and him, are pretty good friends. But he worked down around Central Florida. He worked, I think it was a green swamp management, what they called it. And down there, I don't know people that are familiar in that area, they're kind of flat lands and they have fire trails they cut through the woods mm. and then flat lands. So it makes like a two foot or maybe an 18 inch foot wide ditch and two or three foot wide break. And they'll cut them around the edge of these swamps for fire breaks and they keep them maintained. And that way, if you get a fire, it's not out of control. Sure. Well, well, them hunters get in them fire breaks with this dirt and they'll sneak along them, them fire trails and hunt because you can kind of stock up on deer if you're right. not going to hunt out of a tree stand. So he's coming out of the green swamp, managing bear heading home, and there's this hunter in the middle of the road waving him down. And he's got blood all over me. He said, oh, my God. That's not good. No, that, that's not good. You know you're not going to make it home for lunch. Sure. You, know, you go ahead yeah. and call my wife and I'm going to be late for lunch, honey. <laughs> so he pulls her and the guy's all excited. And there's a guy laying in the ditch. But, well, not butt naked. He's got his shirt on, yeah. but his, his pants are down. Oh, mm. boy. And nice. What, <laughs> nice. Yeah, got yeah, my so what, yeah, what have we got now? I mean, this kind of prison <laughs> shit or something. <laughs> so he, he gets out of the truck, you know. With his hand on his pistol, he don't know what the hell's going on. You know if a guy got yeah, raped if or you what? Got blood, yeah, I'm definitely yeah, having blood. My you got in my some hands. guy laid over the fire trail with his pants down around his knees. That ain't good. That's not yeah. a good sign. That's no. not good. I mean, no. that piece like if I seen badge, I think it was normal. But you know, most people <laughs> would think it was a normal thing. True. Okay. Yeah. So he true. <laughs> Sorry, man. I let him back that up. So, so he he jumps out, and, and what had happened? The guy gets to murmur and tells the story. This guy was hunting along that fire trail, stalking and easing. You know, you walk four or five steps and stop. Well, he sees some white up ahead, and he mm-hmm. figures, and you can shoot a doe or a buck during bow, for, during bow season. And this is back when they had bows, not crossbows. So he draws his bow back and makes a perfect shot yeah. through both cheeks of that guy's ass. That guy had <laughs> dropped his drawers and was taking a crap. In the food plot, I mean, in the, yeah. in the fire trail. Uh-huh. And that guy seen his whitey tighties no. and thought it was a deer's tail. 
Oh my and god! The arrow was still in him and stuck through both. Butt no, the broad a broadhead. A broadhead. Oh, <laughs> stuck through both badge! Butt Can you oh. imagine? <laughs> I, and we were talking about this during bow season. How I would I would rather be shot with a normal bullet than with the broadhead. Oh almost, yeah, because yeah. it's just it's going to do so much damage. So it went through. Both his cheeks, yeah, and it both was in there, oh, and still God. sticking out. Look like, yeah, look like, <laughs> look like the, the Cherokee Indians done got a hold of him. Oh, so then, naturally, the guy God. can't walk. Yeah, and, or, you know, they, so he just picks him up, throws him over his shoulder, and walks him out to the to the dirt road. Oh my, you know, God. open to flag somebody down, and my boss happened to come along and flag him down, and threw him in his truck and carried him out to the highway to meet the ambulance because you know it's hard to oh. give ambulance directions into yeah, a man in the woods. You, you got yeah. you got unnamed dirt roads, right? You know. So That's <laughs> terrible, dude. And the, it was in him. So if he's in the back of a truck, how how is he even laying to not be hitting the arrow? <laughs> oh, it had his... to be. By then, oh. he's probably in shock. I hope, yeah. for his sake, he was in shock. But I Maybe bet it's... you he never hit shit in the woods <laughs> the rest of his life. <laughs> Could you, I, you imagine? Better... No, I can't. That's a, I said he'll crap his pants before he craps in the woods. Because like, I've crapped in the woods so many times. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I mean? have. They're working 32 years. Exactly. Yeah. Eventually, you just have to do it. Even I us probably, fishing, you know, it just I happens. I probably hit in the woods more than having a house. <laughs> exactly. What kind of hunter just sees white and, and just, just starts slings arrows, an arrow? A flinging. bunch of them. You'd be amazed as how many. We've also worked hunting accidents. Where turkey hunting is a huge hunting uh, uh, percentage of uh, our hunting accidents are turkey because really? they'll hide in the palmettos and yelp like a turkey. Yeah, on the, and people sneak up and shoot into the bushes where they hear that turkey yelp. Oh, but we yeah. have a lot of turkey hunters. That makes sense. That are shot every year. Once again, if you can't see the animal, you should not be shooting. I'm just no, going to say that. It's exactly the same right. In the military, but, if I can't see what I'm shooting at, you don't shoot. But I what mean, you got to realize too is, is a lot of these management areas, <laughs> it's, it's, it's anybody can hunt them. Yeah. So it's a lot of people that that don't have permission to hunt, or never hunted, or they've never hunted, or they're your most of your outlaws are pretty good hunters. They ain't gonna take an accident like they they know yeah. what they're shooting at. But most of these are, are novices that's Just never been hunting. People. They buy a license, buy a bow, and they get out there and ease through the woods there, and they see that white. And assume it's a deer. <laughs> that's just to me. That's the craziest. I just part. can't. It blows my mind because with the bow. They're not making – that's not like you have a rifle and it's like, all right, it's 75 yards out. Let me – you know. Right. That's like I'm 20 yards from a man taking a crap. Yeah. Well, maybe but, he was a but, little further. You know, maybe. I don't, with the I, bow? With the, well, yeah, yeah, down there, the woods are pretty thick, too. Yeah. It's kind of like hunting up there you fall. Yeah. Now, you, you could see yourself on one of them fire trails and you fall and go mm-hmm. around a curve – and all this guy's got his butt hung over the fire right. trail. See some white. He's he, got here's some full, leaves he's got, rustling. Now he's got on full camo. He's got the yeah. head mask and all that on. Yeah. And all, the only thing you can see is his white underwear and his brown butt. I get it. I mean. And so it could very well look yeah. like a deer. I, I, I could get. I could see how that may be the case. But, God, it, is, it makes you wonder, though. Like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing flinging so arrows it, like that? So it wasn't white ass? Well, <laughs> I'm just curious. It was a white tail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He thought he, was, he shot a white tail, but it wasn't a deer. He saw okay. the underwear. I think that's what. Yeah, was well, the it, what it is that okay. white underwear. He said that white underwear and thought it was the white of a deer. And I assume, because I don't know, because I wasn't involved. I assume he seen the brown butt or the semi-brown butt above yeah. it, and thought that was. In front of his tail, you the know, rest he, of his body. Maybe yeah. he just had a lot of hair. Yeah, <laughs> he might, have, <laughs> he really he might have had a hairy guy. butt. <laughs> so. We have to track that guy down. And yeah, ask, him. ask me if he had a hairy ass. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> I've never met a deer one hunter. of two things: either shaving his ass, or eating shit in the woods, or, or both of them. But golly, uh, <laughs> I've never met a deer hunter that aims for back. Yeah, that's like, true. Why would he be aiming for his, you know, his... Oh, I have seen a lot of them that shoot anything that moves. Just anything. Oh, yeah. Just wow, that's try scary. to get something that's in That's scary. And, and, and a lot, yeah, and then a lot of these dog hunters, especially if they have doe tags, they see a deer kind of start running through the bushes, yeah. and they open up fire at that point. They're just seeing bushes move. But they wow. you know, might have already seen a piece of the deer. So, I mean, and like I said, and a lot of these people that hunt, you got to realize, especially back then, um, they'd get a hunt, you know, their hunting license and... and Never been in the woods day in their life. Next day they're they're walking along. There wasn't no videos to watch right. and stuff like that. There's not a lot of training. You just but, grab but a if gun. You, if or... you stop and think about it on fire, and I and I, you know, I hunted on fire trails in Central Florida when I was a kid, so I can put myself in this position and see where that could fairly easily be done. If there's a big tree hiding you or something, you're hanging on to the tree bent over. Yeah, and yeah. there's a big tree, and all you've got is a what. 
white underwear yeah. and your butt sticking out, it can very much be mistaken for a, a deer. No, I could, I could. There's always that one in a million scenario, and it happens. That's why, that's why the term freak accident exists. Yes. Because and, and there are actually, freak accidents, and 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 that's why they have a hunting accident. You know, back in the '70s, they when I first hired on, they always said if you want to kill somebody, take them hunting, because you <laughs> could shoot somebody. And yeah. they would claim it was a hunting accident. Yeah, just an accident. Yeah. Nowadays, you're going to get charged regardless. Yeah, you know, as, yeah. You know, Manslaughter. Or, Old or, Dick Cheney, he shot somebody, didn't he? Yeah. Duck yeah. hunting or bird, something. Uh, bird. Quail hunting. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do you know who Dick Cheney is? He was, used Sounds to be the vice familiar. president under Bush. Uh, Bush the second. He shot somebody? <laughs> they were, they were they out were, there quail. They were quail Kind of like what we're doing today. They were on one of them. No. no, no, he survived. Okay. About, like, but, about like us shooting at girls, born. Do you want to hear something funny, though, about that? We won't stay on this topic long. Right. So Dick Cheney shot the guy. It was an it was classified a hunting accident. Yeah. There was no charges or anything. They were burned. But, hunting. yeah, they did a press conference. He, I think he just, like, peppered the guy's butt or back or something. Yeah, you know, okay. It wasn't, like, life-threatening injuries yeah. or anything, I don't think. Yeah, it was number eight. They were quail hunts. Right. Number eight so, yeah, you could be yeah. hard to kill somebody with number eight shot. Yeah. But, anyways... So they did a press conference. This is true, man. You should look it up. And the guy that he shot actually comes out and apologizes to Dick Cheney, even though <laughs> Dick Cheney is the one that shot him. <laughs> it's, I mean, he was a vice president. He was a very powerful man, actually. He but he, but, it, but yeah, after what I've seen today, it could have been one of the mentions. That yeah. guy was where he shouldn't have been. That girl, yeah. we could have. Exactly. Somebody could have easily shot that yeah. girl today. I mean, yeah. like we said, it wouldn't have killed her, but it could have hurt her. And I meant her. to say something. Her, her daddy was the one who had it. And I meant to say yeah. something to him to tell him she, she just didn't know. You know yeah, I mean? well, yeah. It but all, it all worked happened. out. That's exactly how accidents yeah. happen, yeah. 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 But um, I want, anyways, I want to get back to this undercover thing, too. But So you were, you were gathering all these – Illegal meats because restaurants can't buy these meats from just a regular schmo on the from street. From an unlicensed right? person, right? And okay. that protects the people that are doing it for a living. Sure, you're not competing against somebody who's not licensed and, and then undercutting them with price, yeah, exactly. and doing it illegally. Exactly. So I know I heard you say alligator. Obviously, a ton of different fish. What was like the craziest meat, like the most exotic or crazy meat that you sold illegally? You know, yes. As, I bet what? you won't be able to guess. Well, you said alligator, which I'm assuming is not that. You'll never guess it. Okay. And this Deer. is the Asians bought it. Now, we sold mainly to an Asian market. Right. Because, you know, up in Northwest Florida, your rednecks got their own stuff. Right. You know. <laughs> they got their own illegal meat. Yeah. Only, right. they, they, didn't, <laughs> they don't need to buy they were, illegal meat. They were better than me. <laughs> They're out there hunting Yeah, illegally. I'm going to buy from them. But what, Can you tell us, like, was it was it a water-dwelling animal? Yep. Yep. It was a water-dwelling animal. Oh, man. A Man rep, manatee? A rep, no, a reptile. But not a gator. Used for the making of wine or or, or spirits, whiskey of some kind. I will never guess I, this I'm in a million lost. years. Iguana? Nope. What? Either water mockers, rattlesnakes, or snakes. I wasn't even thinking about that. They believe if you put when they brew their alcohol, if you put a poisonous head in there with that brew, a it's supposed head. To, uh, the head is supposed to get or, or the body. I'm not sure. I had yeah. to look up the internet, but they put that in there because it's kind of like drinking the blood of a tiger or something. That's some of that Asian <sighs> stuff. That culture goes back to that. Whoa! Years. But okay. they use that for making wine and stuff, and they would actually eat the snake. We got more oh for my God. We got more for a, a water moccasin or a copperhead than we did for a deer. Wow! Yeah, I would not have guessed that yeah. at all. Jeez! So they they were taking it and using part of the venom or just part of the snake. <laughs> I don't know. Because, I mean, if you drink some of that venom, is I, that can't be good for no, you, right? No. Well, if you had an ulcer, it'd probably be horrible for you. But I think they put it I think they put it in, like, when they process their alcohol. I think yeah. it was in the head. And I think they actually, when you bottle it, I think it's like a scorpion in, in tequila. Yeah, I was about to say, there I are certain brands of liquor. I think it's like a snake head in that yeah. bottle of whiskey. I think. And I could be 100% wrong. They put, like, a worm and stuff. Like, you yeah, know, swallow the worm yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I, I, but I never heard of a snake head, though. I'm not drinking if it's got a snake head. No, I'm telling sense. you right now. I'm not either. Especially I'm, a venomous snake yeah right? i'm not trying and to drink that's what venom it, that's what made it powerful to them was because it was venom snake. good god how much you get for a for a moccasin then in that situation oh we'd get about 20 dollars a foot oh that's not bad how big a how big a snake i mean at least well, three foot yeah, right? three foot Some, snake be 60 bucks you know four and that's back in the late 80s so uh yeah or, in the or 90s, early 90s early so that'd 90s. be that's like a couple hundred bucks yeah that's now. back when people were making seven eight bucks an hour so i mean you take a, a three foot snake is uh if you're making seven bucks an hour, that's dang near that's a day's wages. Yeah. So making, how so how did you uh, what was y'all's preferred method of catching and killing those snakes? We didn't catch them, we killed them. Okay. Basically, we're, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like catch them and cut their heads we'd off. We'd ride the know. river at night. Yeah. 
Oh, and they'd be on top of the water. Yeah, and we would shoot everything. We shot gators. Yeah. We shot frogs. Just for all the same purpose of yes. trying to sell this illegal meat. We yeah. shot hogs. We shot deer. So running down the river in a boat? In a boat with a spotlight. Wow. Yeah. That's what a intense. Job. What a job. Yeah. Anything you see that's illegal to shoot, kill and, it. And every now and then we had, we had a friend of mine. He, he was Samoan. He, he don't work for us anymore. But we'd invite him along and he because he was fearless. I mean, yeah. He, yeah, he'd, and we'd ride him along. He wasn't supposed to be with us, but nobody knew. You know what I mean, so yeah. he'd come and ride with us, and he'd he'd go with us. But we shot, <clears throat> we we shot like I said, a lot of frogs. But we eat a lot of them. We sold a lot yeah. of them too. But uh, yeah, the snakes. You didn't get a whole. Snakes are hard to cut with coons. We sold raccoons um, for meat. For meat, yeah. Wow, I was I was just about to say, they, how many different species do you think? Pro- you know, I sold? don't think we ever sold any possums. Uh, we sold foxes, but wow. this a couple of them Vietnamese we we dealt with they they were from the old school right and they they were actually out of new orleans there was like a, a huge like a flea market Eighty thousand people is what they told us asians oh. would come to this flea market before right. hurricane katrina and that's where he carried his stuff to to sell and he mm-hmm. didn't know how much he jacked it up because he said a lot of them people from the old country from the mountains and all mm. couldn't get wild animals like they did like they grew up on mm. kind of like me it's kind of like people nowadays wanting grits or turnip greens because they eat that when they were small, you know, and yeah. not being yeah. get it. And I, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. And I assume that's what they were. So they paid top dollar just to get a, get their hands on to, that meat. Just it's crazy. Wow. It, yeah. So yeah. which one of those? Did you try all these meats? Like, no, did you get no. to eat any of this stuff? Frogs. Frogs, but you never tried like fox or raccoon or anything. No, no. I'm just trying to figure out like what it tastes like. I don't know. I've heard from several people that <laughs> actually eat raccoon. Yeah. That's pretty good. There's scent glands in raccoon. You got to take out of it. They say it's nasty. I don't mm. know where the scent glands are at. Yeah. But I talked to an old timer one time that his, now this guy was old. If he's alive today, he'd be 110 years old. <laughs> wow. he, had, he was born in early 1900s or maybe 1800s. But he, um, he told he he was raised. He said he, he didn't have an electrician in his house. He was forty six years old. So he's eating some crazy stuff then. Yes, and he said they used to eat a lot of. They had a dog that would tree a possum or a coon or anything. Because back in the I guess twenties, thirties, the depression, yeah, they get meat was was a hard thing to find. And he said the best meat he's ever put in his mouth. Now this guy was a cattle farmer too. Yeah, raised hogs and cows. The best meat he's ever had to eat, he said, was a, a possum cooked over his mom's no. wood stove. Yep. Possum. I don't know. God, they look so nasty. Oh, man. and you I've seen them crawl them. out of a dead cow's belly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. what I mean. They're yeah. just such nasty animals. But he, said that, he told me that he said the best meat he ever eat was a possum. He said they would catch him possums. His dog would treat it, and they'd catch him alive. You know, could they yeah. them hardly bite you, grab my tail. And they would put him in a pen and fatten them up with sweet potatoes. Oh, man. And then that was their Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> a possum. A I've possum. heard people eating possum. I mean, that's not, it's not beyond it's the mean, realm of he told possibility. Me the best. Now, this guy, like I said, he's had you know beef, pork, chicken. He did, I mean, he's 100 years old. He's had everything. <laughs> he's had everything. Oysters, yeah. And, uh, but he, he said the best meat. And it could have been because back in them days they were starving. It yeah, could have been the only meat he had true. that whole yeah. week. Yeah. You it's know, like he, camping. Everything tastes better when exactly. you're camping. So he's like camping his whole life. So yeah. Like he might have been eating sweet potatoes for two months, and then they got a possum, you know? Dude, somebody, man, I, on Uncut, somebody, uh, this is completely off topic, but talking about possums. You've seen, have you ever seen possums, like disease-carrying possums or rabies or anything like that? No, I'd have to, I've seen ra- a lot of rabid fox. Yeah. You know, a lot of foxes with this. We, we got called out to all them complaints. Yeah. You know, rabid foxes in the neighborhood. Bite, and actually, some of them were rabid, biting people. and, and uh, Foxes? Mainly, yeah. And, That's and, weird. And yeah. a lot of times, it's distemper. Ah, okay. And distemper and rabies is real similar. Yeah. Um, because usually you'll get these these cold fronts where you get a real heavy rain that turns cold. Yeah. And that's what gave a fox distemper. You'd get real cold and wet, but and you'd find they'd be up somebody's under somebody's car and wouldn't come out. But Jeez. I did work several rabid fox complaints that we'd have to go try to dispatch the fox. Yeah. And uh, especially like I said in the eighties, I mean, if it was an animal like, you know, a gator in somebody's swimming pool, they'd call us, you know, a, yeah. a rabbit or a fox. That was actually biting that one. We had bit like three people in San. <laughs> in, you know where San Destin's at? Oh yeah, in San Destin. In, in Destin, wow. Yeah. San Destin. No, I take it back. It was in Seaside. You know where Seaside? Yeah. Is? It's even foxes biting people. Yeah, in Dude, seaside. foxes are crazy. You bit a really kid off crazy. a bicycle, so we knew he was rabid. Yeah. Oh my god! So they sent me and another game warden down there. He was actually an investigator too. To, and they said you need to shoot this thing. So this yeah. is at night. You just don't shoot nobody. And that. Like, if, <laughs> Because we're in a neighborhood. I mean, yeah. you've seen Seaside. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's houses. Yeah. Seaside? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so we're riding through Seaside at night with them brick. They got brick paved uh, streets. Yeah. And uh, 
looking for that that fox, that rabid fox. Then we get a, somebody called in, said they seen it because chased their girl on on a bicycle. It's been like three different. Can people. you imagine a fo- a rabid fox yeah, chasing and, your kid on a bicycle? You've got to get shots, and they said them shots in the belly are oh, extremely yeah, painful. They are painful. And then Ooh, when you shoot the it, oh, they don't want you shoot it in the head because that's how they tell if it's rabid or not. Something with the brain. Oh, so you supposed to shoot, but I'm gonna shoot it wherever I can shoot. Yeah, it. shoot yeah. the damn thing wherever you can. So. You know, we're having to crawl up under houses to look for it. Now, you talk about something that takes balls when you think there's a fox, a rabid a fox, rabid fox. Oh, up under a house. It's bitten people. Because all of them are wooden houses up, raised up off the ground. Uh, Most of them weren't, back then weren't concrete. So you'd have to crawl in the crawl space with your flashlights and your and your shotgun or pistol, whatever you had, yeah. and and look for the rabid fox. You know, Tom Bevin, he'd sneak up behind me and grab me and holler, you know, <laughs> try, try to hit your head on the rafters underneath. That's something a buddy would do. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's a buddy for life. Idea. But I had that one that I was talking about. I had a, several shots at that day, but I was scared to shoot because my twenty two. I had that twenty two rifle. If it bounced off the brick and went through a house, now they're going to oh put me in jail. Yeah, no kidding. So, you know, that's we had a lieutenant there. He was in charge of all that stuff. You know, you need to kill that thing. Just don't shoot nobody. But, yeah. You know, and if you get in trouble, it's, you're on your own, but you, you ain't going home till you kill it, you know, kind of deal. Wow. <clears throat> so we hung around that thing. It was like almost daylight, and we got a call in where they seen it. It was, uh, they were still bent on Sandus, and then the house has kind of stopped here. It had a big, like a bulldozed there. They were fixing to start, kind of, it dropped straight down. It's kind of like a, like a clay pit kind of mm-hmm. deal, but it wasn't clay, it was sand. They'd seen it there, and we drove up there and seen it there, and we just popped out and just waylaid it right there. There wasn't no houses there. We just, there you go. We just Blasting shot everything we had. <laughs> Jesus. And it, was, and it tested positive for rabies, so there was three so people. there you go. So. Three people had you get rabies. Putting a kid, too. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Sucks. Kid, that sucks. Uh, yeah, like a seven or eight-year-old girl. About mm. you know, just a little older than your girl. Man. Dr- bit, I want to hurt riding her bicycle. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed about yeah. that. I would be, too. Yeah. Wow. But we, I probably went on. Because sand desk and air was just full of rabies. You know, once you get yeah. rabies, it spreads real slowly. But you get you get an area where everything's infected. That's Mother Nature's way of, of population control. Sure, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> sand desk and air was really rampant in the late eighties. That's so wild because yeah. you don't think of that area. You know, being so close to the ocean. Oh and everything, my god! You, you go down to sand desk and then back then. I don't know how it is now. But I'm sure I'm saying, you'll see more coyotes around sand desk and seaside than you will up here. No kidding. Yeah, that's wow. so weird. Florida's they're, just a wild place. They're man. feral just, up there. Yeah. Florida just a wild place from day one. Yeah. Just all around it. It's just full of wild people, too, in the best way possible because yeah. I'm a Florida native. Yeah, but, yeah. God, I love it. But yeah, it I love was, it, but it's crazy. It's scary. At the it same was time. wild. You know, back like said, we handled any wildlife complaint. You know, they'd call yeah. us. You know, troopers would call us. You know, the deputies uh-huh. would call us. You know. I said when I hired on, there's only seven deputies in the entire county. So there wasn't like there wasn't animal control back then. No. So the game wardens were doing all we that were animal too. Animal control. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I don't think we ever talked about that. Yeah. Wow. So how many alligators have you removed from swimming pools? Or how Ooh. many calls did you get on that one? Yo, know, up here in Northwest Florida, we didn't get as many as them boys in South Florida. Then by boys in South Florida in the summertime answered answered hundreds of alligator complaints. Because in the early '80s, we didn't have we had some trappers, mm. but he had like four or five counties and. Um, so the game wardens took care of and relocated them and all. I I don't know. I probably relocated because back we weren't allowed to shoot them for a long time. We weren't allowed to shoot them. Yeah. And then we were allowed to shoot them if the trapper come pick them up if they was over four foot long. But they were four foot long. We had to, we had to catch hundreds of alligators in thirty something years. Hundreds. Wow. Mm. Jeez. I, I know that's a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd get in the summertime. You're gonna get eight, ten, a dozen calls every more than that. You're probably gonna get twenty, twenty five. Now some of them you don't. There's nothing wrong if he's yeah. in a like Lake Juniper and it's a four foot alligator and somebody's seen it and they called in and they're scared. Well, they're not bothering anything. Yeah, you know, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but if it's like where Cade lives, mm-hmm. um, in that Basin Bayou area, yeah, we used to get complaints out of there all the time. We probably killed a dozen. 10 foot plus alligators out of that because there's houses out of people's hang, pools and yards and stuff well they hang around their docks they'd eat a dog oh, they're going you know, to gotcha. wind up a dog's going to be swimming they're going to eat mm, a dog or a small child or something yeah and, if, and normally if somebody called a complaint then we went and shot it and removed it because if they was that scared for two reasons I want a lawsuit I wanted me to come to Lojo and say hey that gator ain't bothering nothing and then the next day it gets your girl or your it, kid exactly Oof, so, yeah. so if, if, if you yeah. was worried enough to call in a complaint then I always recommended removing the alligator yeah, yeah. that's I'd yeah, that's a safe thing I'd rather err on, on, on that side 100% you know? yeah. Yeah. I agree and then a lot of times our trapper we've had different trappers but they, one was in Westville one was in another we didn't have, ever have any in our county and they always told me Daryl just if you can get a chance to shoot it shoot it and then I'll come get it yeah. you know, it sometimes take an hour or something or sometimes I'd bring it to them I'd shoot it and we'd throw it back in the truck and bring it yeah. to them Nice man. But, yeah, we killed. <laughs> We've got a lot of alligators. Freaking! Out. I saw something on the internet the other day. It was really funny. It was like 
it was like a question posed to all Florida residents. It's like, why do you guys have these these giant screens over your outside area? Have you, have you seen this? I hadn't seen it. No. It's like. Well, the reason we have these giant screens around our pool is because of this. And they had like all these pictures of alligators in pools. It's oh, like, yeah. I mean, you got to you got to isolate your yard in Florida, you know, especially down south and yeah. stuff that they have swimming pools and stuff. That's why those giant screens are there because if you don't, alligators are going to find it. And, and I'll tell you what else there. alligators eat is dog food. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Dog up, food. Food. They'll come up on your porch. I guess some of that, or maybe cat. I don't know if he's got the fish, but what? they'll come up on your porch and eat the dog food. Yeah. I never heard of that. Yeah. That's I, crazy. Yeah. I, I was actually going to a complaint. <laughs> A lady called in a complaint. There's an alligator in her backyard. In her front He's eating porch. all my damn old Roy. <laughs> yeah. And of course, she's scared to go outside. And this is about a four or five foot alligator. <laughs> and so I go down there. There's a freaking wreck on two on four. Uh, no, fourth on, on uh, 331 South. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one that goes from Defuniac to Freeport, the main road to the beach. And back then, it was only two lanes. Mm-hmm. So they had a wreck right there about halfway down around the Rock Hill. So it had everything jammed up. And this is like right at dark. So I hit the grass going through the meeting, the troopers there, and I said, hey, I need to get on by. I got an alligator about to tear up somebody's screen <laughs> yeah. down there at uh-huh. uh, that seaside, seascape area. And uh, so he, he, he started laughing. I went on down there, and uh, I get there. Me and, and another officer was with me. And we get down there, and the gator's gone. So we're – and he, they got – you know how them, they got them low oak bushes and all down there? You know, it's kind of thick. Mm-hmm. We're looking around because I want to go ahead and get this alligator one way or the other. I ain't coming back tomorrow because I know what's going to happen. I'm just going to be coming back every day until you get him. And uh, so she goes to holler and screaming. And we go look, and it's in her dang pool. <laughs> and uh, and it was probably about four foot long. Yeah. And but, so – Yeah, to her, she just thinks it's going to kill oh, her. Oh, yeah. Her and dog get her dog. And, she got a little dog like oh, my yeah. dog. You know, she's just worried to death. And me and Philip are back and forth and back and forth and back and forth trying to get that dang alligator. You're going to get it out of a damn pool now. Yeah, I was I was going to yeah. ask how did y'all remove him if I you weren't shooting I dove in and got him. I was just no, about I, to I, ask I you I if you ever got on, in. Yeah, on top of it. He was laying there, and I just dove and grabbed him. So that somebody's going to bite me. He's going to bite me. I've seen, people, I've seen people in Florida do that, like yeah. uh, animal control people that get in the water with the gator. And they can get them out. Mm-hmm. Now I've never seen them like jump on them like oh, yeah. that. Well, I've <laughs> caught I've caught little three or four footers in the river yeah. come up behind them and just grab them behind the head, you know, and yeah, grab them like right. that. Right, and that's basically what I did in the in the pool. Yeah, but there's this guy. I think you know who I'm talking about, Daryl. You know that guy Manny Manny Puig? Oh that yeah, guy from Florida. Matter of fact, Neil's uh, son-in-law has done some videos with him. I was just about yeah. to say you got you have to tell Bad just and everybody else's story in just a second. So this guy. Super like Florida legend kind of because okay. he does a lot of crazy. He's been on Jackass a lot too. He's been oh, on cool. a lot of those shows. But he's an idiot. I've, he, been, I've met him personally. He's crazy. Yeah. I okay. Mean, I've never met him personally, but well, I've met he's, him three or four times personally. So this guy, I've seen video of him doing this, but he's like dove down with alligators and stuff and got like got like nose to nose with them yeah, underwater, patted him on the head. Yeah. Never got bit a couple times. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess he his thing was if you got like if you got right in front of an alligator, he can't see you. And then he would get up underneath their little their little throat thing. They've got like this area that you can kind of get a hold of, and tickle them kind of, and it kind of like calms them. It, I don't even know, but he would get down face to face with them underwater, like in the Everglades. Now, and this stuff. guy's an idiot. Though. He's cra- Yeah, I mean, and he would just and he would like pull these alligators up and like stuff like that. Anyways, but you've got a funny story about Manny with going hog hunting and with stuff, Morgan. right? Yeah, yeah, so these are people that we know went hog hunting with yes. this guy, Manny. And Manny so. actually has got a knock on the door from the game fishing several times about harassing alligators from some of them clips he uh, had. Because you can't do that with right, an alligator. Right, right. Uh, but anyhow, he was he, he hunted with Neil's, uh, which you bought this probably from his son-in-law, yeah. who has a, a guide business for a lot of time. He went with him does, at least a dozen times, maybe more than that. Wow. And Because he, he had his own show for a while. Yep, he did. And so... He was hog hunting with spears that he had made. And actually, Morgan and them got one of his spears. And so they they had him up a tree, one of them old live oak trees you can climb up. And they they had a 10-acre pen that they had released a pile of wild hogs into. And they were work, would work their dogs. You know, they mm-hmm. got hog dogs. They'd go in there and work their dogs and you know, give them the bay and all that young dogs. So what they were going to do is get in that pen and just run them hogs by Manny in that tree where he could throw that spear and make a video out of it. Mm-hmm. And it. And people think, oh, that ain't no sport in a 10-acre But a 10-acre pen with a wild hog. You know, with a spear. With I mean, a that's, spear. That's pretty sporting. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like herding cockroaches. They go every direction. <laughs> you ain't going to run them in one direction. Right. And so they, they run them by him two or three times. He never could get a shot. So finally – he gets down, and there's a big old sow. She's probably 150 pounds or better in the in the bushes there. He gets a spear in her, and mm-hmm. she runs off. So they get the video. So he's going in there with another spear, going to finish it off. That sow come in there and jumped on his ass and bit him <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> tore his pants up. And Morgan, 
that's the second person's life he saved. I, I talked about, about him saving say. mine in that one video. Yeah. He come in here and got that hog off of Manny. They had to carry him to the hospital and get him stitched up and clean all wow. his wounds out. And his, his video guy yeah. turns around to Morgan and said, he said, if you don't be stupid, you better be tough. <laughs> Dude, Morgan has just – he's just a – just an outdoors yeah. man. He's a now, man. And I've heard from R- RT, who was who carried him on a lot of these hunts, and Morgan, he said, they'd be in the dang woods. And he, actually, if you'll notice, man, he's got one of his fingers missing. Uh, I have seen that before. That's from a water boxing. But oh, he'd go, they'd wow. be going in the woods, see a water boxing. He'd go over and catch the dang water box and pick it up and move it yeah. out of the way. Yeah, he was he a pretty wild guy. He he's, kill, he's stupid. Yeah, that's yeah. when you're handling venomous snakes like that. Yeah. That's, well, that's how he lost his finger. I didn't know that. That's yeah. crazy. I knew he had had something. I figured it was an alligator or something. No, it was but a dang snake bit him. Wow, dude. Yeah, more, yeah, so Morgan has saved. And it's funny because a lot of people consider Manny as kind of like a badass. And then you got some pretty badass stories. And Morgan <laughs> has kind of gotten hogs off both of y'all. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah Morgan's, Morgan's got a nice little resume building yeah. for himself. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, how old is Morgan, by the way? He's, he's my age, he's, right? He's Shane's age. Y'all's age. Like he's 35 probably, ish. Yeah, yeah. He's mid-30s? probably about 85, 86. Who? Morgan. 80, oh, I thought you meant 85 years old. I was like, no, Wait, he, what? he was born 85. <laughs> born, I got you. <laughs> I, I Shane figured. was born in 86. <laughs> him and Shane uh, are pretty close to the same age. Yeah, I was born in 87, so I'm kind of in there, too. Sweet. That's crazy, man. Morgan's been awesome. We've only been around him a few times, but the man just – Cool guy. He knows how to outdoor. He's with an the best outdoors of person. Yeah. I mean, he, if, it, if it has anything, I don't care if it's alligators, turkeys, deer, yeah. hogs, fishing. If if you take if you bet against Morgan, you're going to lose money. Yeah. You know, I guarantee. I promise. You, it's like betting against the Alabama football team. You're gonna, you're gonna, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You're going to lose money. Hey, we end. went with him. We went with him two nights in a row. We'll never forget that in August. And that man put us on two 12 foot alligators two nights in a row. I would yep. imagine everybody in Central Florida had heard about that by the time oh, we yeah. left. Well, Johnny I'll tell you Morris who heard himself. About it. Johnny Morris heard about it <laughs> yeah. and yep. flew in from wherever he was at that, in the world the next night. That is a fact. We all, because we almost went hunting with them. We just missed them by one day because yep. yep. they were going to bring Johnny Morris out, who's the owner of Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Right. He literally stopped what he was doing, flew in because he heard about those two 12 footers that me and you killed. And offered Morgan $5,000 piece because you're going to mount them hold them put them one of his new either cabela's or bass pro right and morgan done cut the heads, he cut the heads off both of them for y'all for us, so for y'all the... cost morgan ten thousand dollars <laughs> sorry morgan <laughs> sorry dude yeah, yeah. johnny morris can do better than five thousand dollars he could have made a better <laughs> offer than that Jeez. Yeah. It been... i think he hooks morgan up at bass pro i'm he, sure yeah i know yeah. morgan goes there all the time yeah there you go and and then johnny just bought a bunch of property down around where morgan and them live i heard about that yeah. and uh that one guy was on the boat with you, that scooter. Scooter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. cool. He's yeah. actually, I think, guides or something. He's a property Johnny. manager for Johnny or whatever yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And, yeah, and they catch – they got a lot of hogs in there. And Morgan and Scooter catch hogs and turn them loose on Johnny's place, I guess, for people to go mm-hmm. get these big hogs. Yeah. But I think Johnny hooked Morgan up at Bass Pro Shop there. I would think so. That's cool. Yeah. Well, Darren, I don't know if you noticed or not, but three months ago, me and Lojo sank a boat. I've seen that. And when I first thought when I come around the corner, it was his boat. It was a blue boat in his pond there. And I've seen that idiot ride <laughs> in his bass boat. You were there. You were there, weren't you? Yeah. I, pulled up, went I pulled up when y'all saved it. I didn't pull up when y'all sunk it. I think I pulled I up when you were there when no, we sank. No, I don't think he wasn't there when we sank. No? No. But he was. He may have seen where we put my boat in there and was doing donuts it's, yeah. <laughs> in my boat. Yeah, probably. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. 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 So... I might have pulled up when y'all were swimming to shore. <laughs> Maybe you But I'm did. probably drunk, so I don't remember. <laughs> when we were swimming it was pretty to late shore. in the afternoon. It was summer. Summertime, you start drinking a little early yeah, it's hot. You, yeah. got, you got to. Got to. Yeah, yeah. yeah you no got to go, Yeah, you got to go by that island time. Then. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's it's right. 5 o'clock somewhere. Yeah. There it is. We needed a drink after we swam to shore on <laughs> yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. yeah but did. I seen that boat. I, started saying, I, I thought it was Lojo's boat. And then I seen y'all out there, and he said, no, it wasn't your boat. Actually, I think we was doing a film. Yeah, and then y'all drug it up there and made a duck blind at it, which you never did use. I know. Well, at the time, got away from us. Yeah, we'll try time. to try again next yeah. year. Yeah. By the way, you lying bastard. <laughs> what I do? I Darryl, told on you. Daryl told, told me that his swamp was loaded with woodies. Right. Yeah. Now. Well, I was oh, talking yeah. about my swamp. <laughs> well, dude, what's the well, difference? I, well, okay. well, Come yeah. on, bro. Proper, proper, an imaginary line is a difference. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking when you were talking about Oh, you meant hunting. like 15 feet over. 
I legitimately thought you meant like what we did last year when we went down into my swamp, like those little spots, because they no. weren't really heavy in there. I got, I but, got where you're being. I just no, figured. my bad, my bad. No, no he's cool. right. Yeah, there was some down in his swamp. And they're full they're right cool. now. Well, now, and, now, and we also just discovered some of this recently that, too. That's true too. That's yeah. so. This, this wasn't bush, information I, that we had. And I bush hauled down to the pond. Right. Okay. But that's I didn't tell, I didn't tell all that. I had him yeah. riled up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was about to I say. I let it ride. Yeah. yeah we we learned that. I told me yeah, there's been there's been hunters ducks here since December. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just like you yeah. liar. Yeah. I told I told Roger to say something to you, and he didn't call you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh man. I just stirred it. Yeah. I was ticked. That's why we love you. Oh yeah. Trying to make a good story, I figured. I said, "Hell, I get them mad as hell about one another." <laughs> get yeah. mad at each yeah, other. I, mad. Yeah. I swear, I never seen that damn Daryl ain't gonna lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I only knew. Have you uh, have you ever had to rescue anybody from a sinking boat? Oh yes, I have. As a matter of fact, yeah. Well, not not. I've actually went to boating accidents where people, but, but I've never had to rescue anybody. I had to go out there one time. Actually, it, 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 well, when we went fishing in the cage. Uh, some boys hit a. They got an old barge sunk out there in the bay, and they, they mm. seen it. Now this this is stupid. They're coming across like one or two o'clock morning. See a light out there in the bay. Uh huh. Now if you see a light, it's attached to something, right? You would in the think middle so. of the bay. You would think so. I mean, it's not just it ain't it ain't a UFO, right? So they head to the damn light in the middle of Chocolate Bay, which is about seven miles wide there. Ooh. And that light is on that old ship that sunk to keep people from hitting it. And they run up over one of them, oh. broke their leg. They come so they hit it full speed? Uh, full speed, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. They had a cell phone wrapped in a Ziploc bag, and they was able to call, and Trey Nick actually went out there and got him and had to go there and, and work it, and they actually brought a helicopter there to life flight. They didn't really need it, but you know, yeah. they want a life flight. They want the money out of there. Um, but <clears throat> that's – I've never actually went out there where somebody was – you know, now you're getting destined where you got some drunk falls out of their boat, and that right. tide's ripping through there, and we'd go there. They probably would have drowned, but you'd have to go get them and stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, not – I have sunk a parked boat. You oh, really? A, yeah. a parked boat? So Actually, you... I sunk two parked boats in one day. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, yeah. wait a second. Now, hold on. So you've sank more boats than Badge has, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, if Badge has only sunk build, one, huh? then yeah. he, he's way behind. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. In one day. In one day, yeah. So, yeah. Elab okay. elaborate. Yeah, please, we've got to this story. We had a camper trader on that property we're talking about there in Basin Bayou that we had, we had a camper set up. And there was 10 acres that was privately owned, and we had the only access to it. We had a gate there, so we was able to go there and camp. Because the state back then made us work so many hours of water patrol every mm -hmm. month because we had gotten bed with the federal government. And so you had, had to have so the mm -hmm. feds paid 25% of our money okay. to go towards water safety, water patrol. But you had to put in them hours, though, yeah, so out to of get that money. Out of 160 hours, you had to have... Like seventy hours a month, which is a lot. Several times, one hundred sixty hours total a month, and then out of that, seventy had to be on the water. Yeah, in some right? places like eighty. Dude, that's a lot now of that's, freaking water hours. That's court. Yeah, that's is. court time and everything else. <sighs> wow. So, Jeez. So you had to get creative, and I okay. am creative. I was probably the most creative person they ever hired on. <laughs> Love it. And, uh, <laughs> so, I believe it. And and actually, I, I <clears throat> the, our budget goes, our water person goes from July first to June thirtieth of every year. Well, that one year when, we, when they started really cracking down on their people, they, they was writing people's letters and getting on their ass, and, and you had to go out on water patrol regardless. I don't care what happened. And so I actually blowed my motor up, checking the flounder gear. I walked to the front of the boat, me and another guy, on July 4th weekend, July 4th. Oh, no. And it jacked. I had one of them old shallow, the boats that run real shallow. It jacked the motor up out of the water. I didn't mm -hmm. know it. So my motor sitting there running dry mm -hmm. oh. while I'm checking this flounder gigger. And I look back and steam's coming out mm -hmm. of it. Oh, how long I'm, do you think it was running out of the water? Uh, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, Ooh. gosh. Uh, long enough where it locked up. Oh, yeah. So when okay. I come back. I had, <laughs> oh, I to, man. Of course, this guy was paddling, so he couldn't. So I had to call somebody. It's like 1 or 2 o'clock morning. Come get me. Tow me back to the landing. Load up. Well, the state was out of money. The state constantly stayed broke back in them days. Right. So they couldn't replace my motor. So I went 361 days, because it was July 4th, without yeah. a boat, and got my water patrol hours in. Okay. And got commended at a meeting about getting water patrol hours no. in. Now, how do I got 80 hours of water patrol a month and not having a boat? Nobody ever asked that question. I was about to say, how did nobody ask? Uh, they you didn't had a care. Fried motor. They didn't care. I, it, that's kind of like you know, based on a true story. Yeah, or, you know, I don't okay. let the truth stand in the way of a good story. Right. So I mean, that's that's kind of <laughs> how they base it. As long as you was willing to lie, they'd back you up one hundred percent. Okay. All right. So okay. we had this. We had this. And also, if you camped on the river, 
a hundred percent of that county is water. I could drive down to a boat. Listen, how stupid it was. I could drive down to a boat landing, mm -hmm. get out of my truck and check boats as they come in. That wasn't considered water patrol. I could go camp on the river and stay at the camp all day long, and yeah. it was considered a hundred percent water. Oh patrol. come on, checking boats is not water patrol. Yeah, this is what's stupid. This is this is some idiot in Tallahassee deciding what it is. So we had that. We had two campsites. We had one on the Chocolate River and one down there that, that basin by you on that private property where nobody had access to. We had a, we had right. a, a trader actually uh, that uh, FEMA had given us. So we'd all meet up down there. We'd cook lunch and all that, and everybody would would launch somewhere. We'd all meet up and park our boats on the hill mm -hmm. and go inside and play cards. We had air conditioner. It'd be hotter and hell in July. I mean, nobody wanted to yet. So we and we once you signed off at the thing, stay a couple of days. It was 100 percent water control. Nice. So we're in there, <laughs> we're in there playing cards one day, or playing something. I don't matter what it was. Yeah, just and, hanging out. Yeah, and we hear a on the trailer door. Now this ain't good because the only way they can get to us is by water. I was water. about to say this is private. This property. is private property. Yeah. It's a locked gate. They can't come from the highway. Right. So we go to the door and the guy says, "Hey, one of y'all's boats sunk out there. What happened? The storm had come. We didn't know it. And water." had come over my boat was parked beached when it but water had come over the back of it. Oh it was beached so and filled it oh. up and sunk it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Wait, I, was this the same boat that was broken or was this Yeah, but it, it was after they put a new motor on it. Year, okay. 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 So, so they had fixed it. Okay. Yeah, they had fixed it, put a brand new motor on it. But it <laughs> oh, sunk but, but it didn't sink all the way because the motor and all stopped. It was probably, you know, two foot deep. Right. It just went under. But I you yeah. got radios and all that electronics in there. Oh God. And a buddy of mine was riding down, he said he could hear the waves breaking in my boat because when it done it, it short circuited my radio. Oh no. So I'm sitting there and Tallahassee, which is our dispatch, calls me and says, Hey Daryl, you got your mic keyed. I said, I ain't got my mic. I'm not even on my boat. Yeah. But it had short-circuited, so it was an open mic. And they said they could hear us come out of the trailers. Oh, fuck. Good God. There's <laughs> a bunch of dudes running. Up. Yeah, because we didn't, we didn't know my mic was keyed in my boat because yeah. the water had short-circuited. Oh, and my so God. They had an officer drive down from the Phoenix Hall and there and tell them, hey, y'all watch your language. You damn your, your mic's keyed. Everybody in the state of Florida is here. <laughs> oh, so that was an officer, too, that came knocked on the door? No, it was a, the oh, public, a guy. John Q. Public. Oh, my God. But when we got out there, it had shorted my radio. Yeah. And yeah. at that point, the radio was just open mic. Yeah. Because as he, this boy's coming down, he could hear waves breaking in my boat. <laughs> and he knew me pretty well, so it didn't surprise him. Yeah. He didn't know what the went on. But, yeah. And, uh, and then they could hear all that cussing and laughing. What were y'all doing? Trying to get buckets and get the water well, out? What were y'all doing? Say, well, you fuck them some. <laughs> That's what they get when they make us work harder. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. roasting your boss oh, yeah. on a hot mic. Yeah, I wish yeah. Tallahassee was here. You know, oh, God. <laughs> oh, y'all want some water hours? Here's yeah. some damn water yeah. hours for you. They want, to fuck they want to screw us. It's going to cost them $10,000. Yeah. You know? Stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> so Randall pulls up, and he's he waving his hands like, oh, y'all shut up. And he said, hey, y'all got an open mic. Oh, so, my oh. God. That's and fantastic. And then Tallahassee calls me on my – because they had our own cell phone numbers. Hey, you got – your mic keyed. I said, it ain't keyed. I'm not even in my boat. Yeah. Yeah, so we bailed the water out of it, dried it out, got my boat out. Oh, God. <clears throat> so I went and took my boat, and I had to undo the, the everything, all the wires, because mm. the, the, the mic stayed hot. I couldn't undo it. I had to un disconnect yeah. the battery, the power to it. So we, we go do that. We come back. We're cooking dinner that night. And by then, we're, law, we're, we're all off, off duty. Yeah. And so we're sitting around the camp. And we so we had, we had taken out, out out in the water about two or three foot deep, put concrete blocks out there, and we could tie the front of the boat down to the back of the boat. Now that we kind of faced the waves and kind of okay, you know, there roll you it go. down with the waves. Yeah, <clears throat> and so we had tied. I actually I had barred another guy's boat because mine wasn't serviceable to get water pro in, mm -hmm. and it staked his boat out there about ten feet off the bank and probably you know eighteen twenty inches of water, and had the concrete block tied to it, and it was a little rough that night. Yeah. Oh God. So, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> About, I don't know, 8 or 9 o'clock at night, again, we're in there playing cards. No. What in the hell's going on? <laughs> Flounder gigger's coming by there. They're gigging flounders on the bank there. Uh -huh. And my boat, one of the rope had broke, had sawed in two on the concrete block from the oh. waves, spun it around, and I'd sunk another <laughs> boat. <laughs> <laughs> The same day, just the later same, on that yeah, night. Yeah, later on that night. Oh, oh my, yeah. God. Oh my God. But it's so now when I hear a, 
He's like, oh, I always go look at my boat. Yeah. Make sure it ain't <laughs> yeah. the water. Even though it's on the trailer on land, you're still just like, oh, well, luckily, God, he's my that boat. that didn't have a radio in it. So. No, there you go. So yeah. at least you weren't roasting your, the state's yeah. office. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's incredible. I, I could see that happening, though. Two just, boats in one afternoon. Because that's, oh, my one God. One day, basically. Jeez. What, what about that one? How did y'all get that one, I mean, undone? There was about eight of us. And this was like a... Uh, it was about like yours, but it was it was an aluminum boat. Yeah, we drug it up on the hill and got the bow up out of the hill, mm. and then we got a bunch of us just started. We got a jack actually jacked up the back of it, and then just started bailing it out. Okay, there you go. That's yeah. incredible. I could yeah. just see y'all putting those concrete blocks. Like, okay, this will keep it in the water, so <laughs> yeah. it'll actually move with the waves. Yeah. All right, we're good. Let's go. Oh, let's yeah, go we, play some cards. Yeah, we got we got to figure it out. We, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Been, I could totally see. That. I could see us was. doing that. Oh, yeah, I could too. it's like hey, we got it. we got it. now we got the problem solved. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because me and him, we've had it. We almost had like a similar situation yeah, on did. the river, but in reverse. You remember that? Yeah, we almost so, got stuck. You know how the river, you know, the, the when they do the generations and stuff, right. the water, I mean, God, it drops, what, I mean, 10, 20 feet at times. Yeah, That's especially one, where you are. Yeah, the, the Chattahoochee on the south side of Eufaula, which is where me and Badge have filmed a ton of videos. And so we were doing a catch and cook this day. So we caught a little hybrid. I think we were going to just pan fry it. You know, it's for a video. Dope. We'd never had hybrid before. It was actually nasty. You remember that? Yeah, We dude. needed you to cook it for us because we did a terrible job. Somehow I got horrible. sand in it because that's what I do anytime yeah, I see yeah, any yeah. fish. I get sand in it. I don't know how. <laughs> it's like, but, like eating on the beach. <laughs> exactly. I, you got to answer so, sand. Yeah. So we had kind of wedged our boat up on the little beachy area right there by the dam. And I, we were in the middle of the drawdown at that moment. I don't think we realized, though, how fast the water levels drop, you know. Quick. So, you know, you got your front end on the on the beach, but, you're, you know, your, your transom's in the water, your motor's in the water still. So you think, all right, we're good. So we get out, cut the fish up, get the pan hot, <laughs> propane fired up, you know, do our whole thing, season it, eat it. Okay, the video's done. All right. So then we, you know, go to look at the boat. And it's almost completely out of water now. I mean, the water has dropped so quick that the only thing left in the water is like the very the tip of the prop. Yeah, you know, you remember it was yeah, it was bad. I mean, and that was we, your blue boat. Yeah, the blue boat. So yeah, I mean, that, it's it's an is, aluminum boat, but it's yeah, still but heavy. It's still heavy. Yeah, it's, still yeah, heavy. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's a damn near twenty foot boat. It's big, and so we had to we tried to to push it straight out. Couldn't do that because it was just so wedged on there. So then we had to literally walk the boat we had to get on the on the bow the very front and just pick it up and move it like three inches you remember that <laughs> Dude, yeah. we're having to do a deadlift both of us deadlift in the front of the boat and move it three inches and we'd do it again deadlift three inches and all the while that water is still dropping so if we if we had waited five more minutes maybe not even that long we'd, we'd have been stuck yeah. overnight. until, until yeah. overnight yeah. Yeah. Until, they, yeah. until they did yeah, it you again prepared to stay overnight oh they? no we had yeah. nothing with us no nothing. no probably like no Mosquitoes water would have been fat oh yeah 100 we probably would have abandoned the boat honestly yeah, we, we yeah. actually tied it to something and just Abandoned. <laughs> I, done, I, I got. A, I don't know if you know what a Scandi White is. It's, no. a, it's a boat, and it has a um, in the back. It has a, I forget what they call it, but it's like a circle. You, the, yeah. If it's running wide open, the prop's actually out of the water. A tunnel hole. They call it. A oh my gosh. And okay. it has a jack plate. That's when jack plates first come out. You mm -hmm. jack it up and down. So if you're running wide open, the motor's not even below That's the crazy. boat. It's above the water. It forces it in that tunnel. So I went down there to Bluntstown, where the guy made them, picked it up, and this guy was telling me, he said, "Man, he said it that it'll run." You know, in, in ankle deep water. Wow. Like, well, hell, so me and a buddy of mine, we went out there and tested on the river. There's a couple sandbars at the mouth of the river, pretty mm -hmm. shallow. So we're running across, and we see seagulls standing there. And he said, Oh, I don't know if I'd go that. He said, Guy told me it'd run in ankle deep water. And we Ooh. beat that son of a bitch. Oh. It won't run. It won't run in ankle, in ankle deep, deep water. water. <laughs> that was a fit. <laughs> that damn thing was, we done the same thing. It was heavy. Them boats oh. are built like a tank. Yeah. And it took us all, damn near all day doing the same shit. <laughs> Picking it up, just moving. barely moving. Picking it, it up, yeah. moving. Yeah, inches. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it, it took us a little while too. We oh, barely yeah. got it back it was in the water. Close. Barely. Oh, I mean, yeah. we because we had to, you know, it's, it's stuck with this. You had to turn it all the way on its side. The problem on and, the chocolate hatch, you're, oh. wait, you're waiting on a heavy rain, and then it really? takes seven days to get down there. Oh my so, gosh! You know, yeah, so you're stranded, stranded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. biblical stranded. <laughs> you're <laughs> literally fasting for yeah. seven days. And then one time God. on that same sandbar, the Coast Guard was out of Destin. But they would they would go run the mouth of that river. You know, they run that whole bay area. So me and Eddie, we had Eddie had a bigger boat than me, and uh, they called us about one or two o'clock in the morning. They had run up on that sandbar, but not uh, in, you know farther out. I mean, they weren't because their boat was big, yeah. And it got stuck, and so they called us to come get them out. So me and Eddie go up there, and so we've got like a couple hundred feet of rope. Mm. So we just stripped down, 
and start walking from our boat to their boat, hook that rope, and we're going to try right. to tow and let them. And they, if, they, if you spin back and forth, they'll blow like a hole out with that big, their big motors. Yeah. And could get up on a plane. So we started getting close, closer to the boat. And it's like one or two o'clock in the morning. And we're naked, you know, walking in there. And I told mm. Eddie, I said, you know, they got women in the damn Coast Guard. Oh, that's true. And I said, yeah. oh, shit. So I hollered, <laughs> we get like 50 yards from them. I said, hey, y'all got any women on the board? And, yeah. and a couple, there were two of them. They said, yeah. And I said, well, we're butting. And it's like, and they're getting oh. eaten alive by mosquitoes. No. I said, well, well, we got two butt naked game boards coming through <laughs> with ropes. And the girl said, I don't give a shit. The damn mosquitoes are eating me up. Come on, bring the damn rope. <laughs> I've seen it before. Just get, get the rope. Give me yeah. the rope, boy. So we come in there, hooked the rope up to him, got back, and he had to do like just back and forth. Till we, oh, we were out there, my gosh. Like in deep water until we got it, finally got him pulled off the sandbar. Are there any alligators in Choctaw Hatch? Oh, hell yeah. I was about to say, that's what, I, that's what I'd be thinking. What time of year was that? Summertime, I'm yeah, guessing? Yeah, summertime. Man, that'd be super scary. But well, they're worried about that skipper's losing about where he wanted to hit one of his stripes. Yeah, you know, that's that's true. Yeah. You know, he'd been in world of shit. God, yeah, no. we should not be allowed to own boats. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, but the military don't put up with them kind of mistakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, you're going to get fired or not because fired, that, demoted. Yeah. Right, because there's only a couple places you can run up in the river that was deep enough for a big boat. Yeah. And there's like seven different mouths of the river. There's only like two of them you can run a big boat up in. Yeah. And they run up one they shouldn't have been up in. Ooh. And I guess, you know, he's skipper of the boat. He's supposed to have charts and all that. So mm -hmm. he, yeah, he thanked it. He was, you know, we eat free there for a while. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Freaking Coast Guard, <laughs> dear God, yeah. man, we could talk stories with you all day, Daryl. We got to get you on again, man. Yeah, it just keeps going and going and going. Yep, yep, yep. We need to get some of them stories that we deleted. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, yeah. Have, we do. Had a bunch of stories. Yeah. Be fresh soon. Yeah, a lot yeah. of saltwater stories down there on the beach. Back oh, when, yeah. the, when the beach was. You know, very few people. God, I hate we lost that podcast. I do too. Oh man, I can't even. I don't even want to say some of the stories because I don't. I want to keep them fresh. We'll keep them fresh. But there's plenty of naked males in this one, though. There's plenty of naked, <laughs> naked <laughs> Daryl stories coming. Naked yeah, very, very, yeah, yeah, very few game warden catch them stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, we we could spend the rest of the year doing Daryl fuck up stories. In the <laughs> yeah, I promise you. <laughs> Hey, well, that's what the people love to hear. They love yeah. watching us to screw up. I oh, mean, just, yeah. yeah. They love yeah. it. That's a part of, of A lot screw of up. bad decisions made. Yeah. 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 Well, that's okay. We all do it. That's the thing about human beings, man. We're oh, just yeah. we're flawed creatures. We just yeah. make bad decisions from time to time. Yeah. That's the definition of idiot. If you do the same thing twice, and expect a different outcome. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Insanity, idiot, which, whatever. Which I've actually done that. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all done yeah, that, too. So. Yep. Hey, Badge has got a new cameraman. He does. He does. Coming I don't know if, that, hot. if that's a secret or not. No, it's not. I, I literally, it's a joke because I say it so uh, much. Yeah, okay, it, well, it ain't no more. But, you know, everybody <laughs> thinks Badge, I just want to put this, everybody thinks Badge is a nice guy. I, people don't know that I interviewed for that job. Yeah, did you? Yeah, a real short this interview. Is the 60-year-old been divorced three times? Wasn't that what you said? <laughs> yeah. It, that's what you yeah. were looking for? Well, yeah. he told me I was fat and stupid. I yeah. Said, I said, God damn, what do you really think? He said, you're ugly, too. <laughs> <laughs> badge. They never see that yeah. side of badge. No, they yeah. don't see that side of badge. No, he's, got, he's all lovable in his yeah. videos. I mean, ruthless. this is the first time I've seen badge since, since that interview. And I said, Well, tell me, do I have the job? You know? Yeah. He, he said, No, you fat bastard. Get out of here. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you don't have the <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah. That's why you haven't been back. Yeah, yeah. that's why you've been back. Been it's avoiding been Daryl. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Yeah, and, yeah. and I have forgiving for it. Okay, that's good. I was going to say, I walk, I walk by a mirror there. This, Hell, he wasn't making a joke. He was being serious. <laughs> I almost just fell off my stool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's a difference when you're just telling the truth. Right. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't then joke. you're just yeah. being mean. You yeah, know? He, he wasn't being mean. He's just stating facts. I said, well, now. now we know. Daryl did not quite get the cameraman job. I, didn't yeah. I wasn't qualified. Yeah. No. Well, you Fat, know. stupid, and ugly. Yeah. <laughs> that's too many strikes against you. Yeah, right that's there. three strikes you're out. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> any any response? Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you hire this man? Come on. Come on, man. No. You know He's I ready to go. I needed need the job. Man. Yeah. Put, put me in coach. I don't smoke. <laughs> 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 now people like seeing you in front of the camera, Daryl. You can't be yeah, behind the camera. Your star. Man. Oh, okay. That's what. Yeah. That's I guess Badge was looking after my future. That's all that yeah. was. That's what yeah. it was. He knew you had. <laughs> a future. He had to. Be, he had to be strong and you know. That's right. Tough right. Love. He wanted to hire you, they, but they he just that, couldn't. They call that tough love. That's right. Tough love. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's got. He got him a little. He got him a guy from up north from Chicago. Right? I heard that. Yeah. We call it Chicago. There's an Sh R in it. Yeah. yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I wonder like if he's ever heard of cheese grits. I doubt it. Hush puppies. 
Definitely not hush puppies. Yeah, I bet he never had. We no need to up. break you in, turn or breeze. have you break him in? Yeah, you should break him in. Oh, yeah. We should bring him out here for a couple of days and yeah. let uh, let Daryl tell him how it is. Yeah. yeah, he might be back to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Give him a couple months yeah. first before yeah. you bring him down here. Let ease yeah. it into it. Ease yeah, him in. ease him into it. Yeah. But, yeah. No, we're gonna have to do this again soon, Daryl. At least uh, at some point in the future, we we'll have to figure out the whole. AC situation because it's oh, about to start no. getting hot out. Uh, hot. Yeah, well, we got some cold weather next week, and then it's pretty much over with. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in the springtime then. So a lot of fishing, Bedding. some turkey hunting. Turkey, turkey hunting. well, turkey hunting soon. Next yeah, couple weeks. Couple weeks. Yeah. So um, yeah, and bed I'll fishing. The yeah. catfish on you. Yeah, fall that's right. In the next we couple weeks, them that's big right. catfish will be spawning, yes. and you can catch 15, 20, 30 pound catfish, and you follow. Yeah, we need to do that. That needs to happen soon. Because yeah. I mean, God, we, me and Daryl and uh, uh, Holden and Andrew too went out there, ran some jugs, and man, we caught. How many did we? Ca- I mean, in an hour. I mean, it was really? effortless. We, we could have caught. 50 of them. We could have caught them all day if we oh, just yeah. keep really? running jugs. Yeah, yeah. We, he, you know, he, he found the creek channel, and we just kind of dropping them jugs all around that creek channel, 10, 12 foot. Yep. You know, and, man, they were just – half of them were, had fish on them when and, we came In back the springtime, I want to let your viewers know there's a secret. They're bedding, and you get them creek channels where it drops off s- s- sharp. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll get up in a hole or an old bank or something, and they back up in there and lay their eggs. Yep. And so you want to get where it goes from, like, say, five or six feet, feet uh, deep down to, like, 20 foot. And you want to float some dead bait, live bait, right on the edge because that's where them big catfish hang out. And yep. you can catch – I mean, we catch – we used to go every year in March, me and mm-hmm. some of Neil's uh, kin folks used to go. And they, we would catch – there would be three boats. We'd catch two or 300 pounds of catfish a day mm. for two or three days. And you follow? Yeah, we caught, oh, yeah. We caught nine – there was three of us – no, there's more than there about eight or nine of us fishing. We caught over 900 pounds of catfish in three days. <laughs> 900 pounds? In March. That's a half ton almost. Wow. Jeez. Yep. I well, said so that is I the prime it. time, and they're big. Yeah. They're up the, a five or six pounder is a little catfish then. Mm, wow. So we caught a lot of 15, 20, 25. I don't, I don't know if we ever got any 30 pounds, but we caught them. I mean, they were big. We got to make that happen. Yeah, we need to do that yeah. soon. And, but yeah. we caught them off of jugs, but me and Badger was talking about when we were going fishing the other day. I said, well, I don't know why you couldn't catch them off a of rod and reel. You could if you just yeah. sat there. If, if you yeah. drifted on that, we were talking about if you drifted on that channel, got you like a slip cork yep. and put it 15 foot deep and just drifted and stayed on that channel, I said, mm-hmm. well, you couldn't catch them off a of rod and you reel. You could. We're going to do it. Could. We could run some jugs first and then find an area, just sit down with a rod and reel and just kind of try to catch them on rod and reel too. But you could float yeah. that whole area. That creek yeah. channel. Oh, it's loaded, man. Yeah, because you got, you got a bottom machine. As long as you got a bottom machine, you just kind of bump it in and out of gear. You get yeah. a day where it's not windy, where it ain't blowing you off. Right, of it, right. And put your two or three rods out the back, put one like 12 foot, one like 15 mm-hmm. foot, maybe even one 20 foot. Just troll them real and slow. Just, or just bump kinda... it in and out of gear. Yeah. Use some, cut, some shiners cut in half or mm-hmm. bluegills cut in or half. Shrimp or, or anything, shrimp. right? Yeah, anything. We were using we, shrimp that day. That well, was we, killing We used shrimp that, that year, too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that sounds like a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it does sound like it a won't lot be fun. crazy hot yet either. It'll just be kind of right. warm, nice day. So, yeah, we got to do that real soon. I'd love to catch a twenty-five pound catfish. I would too. One of them rods. Oh yeah. man, that'd be cool. That'd be a hell of a fight, man. Yeah, like a brick. Would. That would be awesome. Oh, another thing, uh, you know, Southern Renegades. I was talking to Shane. Mm-hmm. He said the cat, the uh, redfish are on to tell you that when y'all can go, mm-hmm. he you need to he needs to call you and y'all need to be ready to go the next day because there's a certain Ooh. wind. I don't even know what it is. But he said he's found out where they're stacked up. He's catching 25, 30 slot reds a day Ooh. with that wind is the way it is. We got to do that, man. Yeah, that would be I've awesome. only caught one redfish in my life, and it was on accident, so it didn't even feel real. Yeah. Have you ever caught one? Yeah, I have. I used to go down there every, every have summer. Nice. Have, you ever, have you ever eaten one? Yeah, love it. I've never eaten one. Oh, they're good. You can't oh, screw them. Blacken them. You have, oh. Well, you can cook them any way you want to. Bake them, broil them, blacken them. Yeah. But, but they're like... If I cooked a redfish, you know them red snapper cooked there at the camp? Uh-huh. If I cooked a redfish and a red snapper, you couldn't tell the difference. Really? Yeah. Wow. They're that real, red snapper was delicious. Yeah. yeah. The real summers are red snapper. Man, I love fish, man. I'm coming I, around yeah, on fish. I, I didn't that. like fish that much when I was young, but I'm really coming around now. Yeah. Especially when you catch it yourself. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know? And they, that whole, like, deer thing, you know, getting the animal yourself and everything just makes yeah. it taste and, better and for some reason. Of course, we run out of time, but we talk about shooting some rabbits up there at the least. Yeah. We had rabbits yep. all over. And I love rabbits now. Like a rabbit stew or something? Oh, I like, like a, fried, you know, yeah. fricassee, you know, like a stew or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I love a young rabbit fried. Like I don't a, think like, I've ever had rabbit either. Oh, rabbit's delicious. Maybe I have. I don't yeah. know if I've had rabbit. Yeah, rabbit's delicious. Man, I'd love to eat some rabbit. Yep. 
Yeah, we'll have to do that soon, too. I tell them, yeah. I had two in my yard there that hung around there last week and started to shoot them. Like, yeah. Mega chases them about two or three days a week. <laughs> and there's only been one. I guess he brought yeah. his girlfriend with him. Ooh. And Mega makes one loop, and they'll come through the chicken pen, and they'll run right by me, the rabbit will. Yeah. And then when Mega gets back to me, he quits. Really? It's like, all right, you didn't shoot him. I'm done. Wow. So I, I said, I hate to shoot Meg's pet because he runs yeah, about three afternoons. It's after- like fun for yeah, him. Yeah, it's about three afternoons a week. It gives him something to do, too. It makes yeah. him feel important. But he'll stay stuff. after him. But it's funny, when he, it's like, all right, I run him around here. He'll make a big yeah. circle in my backyard. Yeah. And cut the, the rabbit will run right through my brood box mm-hmm. and come under my boat shed. <laughs> and a lot of times he'll stop right by me. Yeah. And Meg is probably 50 yards behind him. Mm-hmm. And then he'll run off in the woods. And then here comes Meg. And when Meg sees me, he stops. He's like, well, Dad didn't shoot him, yeah, so this, I guess it's like, fine. Like a couple of days a week. <laughs> Jeez. Maga. What a hell of a dog. A deer yeah. dog. Dog. A deer dog. Yeah. We're talking about it, yeah. Freaking tracked a deer for me. Yep. I used, right to I him. used to think he was worthless. Yeah, he definitely not. Not after that night. No. no. Not after that night. Yeah, I'll have to keep him locked up. Old Neil will be coming to the house getting him now. Yeah. Everybody that we know, especially after they see that video, they're going to be like, oh, man, we got to have this dog. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's all on video. I don't know if you've seen it yet, Badge, but you showed me some of it. Yeah, before. he just tracked that deer down. We had no idea where that deer it went. Right. And the next day, he lost he lost my flashlight down there. Yeah, about halfway down. We go the next day, and I brought Mega. Mega d- tracks him back, and Took he follows me, me right the back exact on the trail. Tra- and found the flashlight. Yeah, I found the flashlight. Yeah, that dog is dialed. What the his heck? nose is dialed in. Yeah, yeah. Well, they apparently used to use those dogs to, to track yeah, Morgan, animals. Yeah, Morgan, big in a dog hunting and all. And yeah. he said a dachshund is the number two trail dog used in the United States for trailing deer. There you Labrador's go. number one and dachshunds are number two. Well, that we saw, we saw that's true because, yeah. I mean, he, dude, he went, you have to, you'd have to, you had to have been there, but as soon as he got the scent, he took off running to the woods and we thought he was running the wrong direction. We were like, no, Maga, <laughs> over here. Because I had seen it, I'd seen it run this way, but apparently then it went into the woods. Yeah. But he went right to the woods. And I gave lo- I knew in. I couldn't keep I gave loads of the flashlight. I said, Don't lose my dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he didn't. He waited for me a couple of times. So that I mean, that was the best in my opinion, that was the best dang tracking dog in the world that <laughs> yeah. day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like he was bred for that, yeah. made for it. Yeah. yeah. So. I couldn't believe it. If we, awesome. ever, if we ever can't find a deer, we know what to do now. Well, next year when we're camping, because y'all had a couple deer this year yeah. that shot up, or you followed it, run off that stuff. But. Yeah, including a big buck, a yeah. holding shot. Yeah. And, and that, that's away. all you would have needed to track him 100 yards and find a blood trail. That's right. If, if yeah. Mega could have even probably 75 or and just showed you the direction, y'all would have found that yep. deer. Yep, that's true. But, you know, that's the problem. You get to an area, you don't know which way he went. Yeah, you know? yeah, you just don't And that know. was our problem. Yep, no you blood. You seen it go, but we didn't know where he went to. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, and the farther you get away from that point, you know, like a compass, then you're you know, you're talking about ten acres, and all of a sudden you're talking about a hundred. Yeah, you're acres. losing. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. losing area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'd have never found that without Mega. No, that was an that was intense. That That's was a dope. fun night, man. Just That's me, Daryl, and Mega. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. a fun night. I'd throw and that deer on my back and walk out. It was way in the woods. Yeah. And he got some deer burger out of it. Downhill. Yeah, I, I worked for that one. That one <laughs> yeah. made me work. That's why I loved it though. It was, was the funny, most funny he thing. He toted that deer on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, and me on my bad knee, I wasn't going to help him. <laughs> what, I didn't shoot the damn deer in yeah. And he walked about 400 yards uphill. Now, I ain't, I ain't talking about – yeah, it's uphill. I'm yeah. up a pretty damn good hill. I was working. And he, gets, and he gets pretty close. He throws him down about 50 yards from the buggy. It's pretty thin. It ain't thick no more. And I said, well, hell, I'll, I'll drag him the rest of the way. So I drag him the rest of the way. The next day I look, there's a – in road that runs about 50 yards where he was right, at. Where I, where I had found the deer. <laughs> yeah, where he so found I went the deer. hard way. <laughs> that would have been walking straight down the creek. He would have had to walk up. <laughs> he could have took his buggy down that little trail. Yeah, we just I didn't for, know I forgot where about I was. That. I forgot about that road. Yeah, you know? and I didn't know where I was because I didn't have service. We couldn't even call each other. We were just yeah. yelling through the woods Yeah, I, wasn't even, I right. didn't even think It was about intense, it. man. Yeah, he, he could have, <laughs> he could have drug the deer 50 yards. Just no problem. Yeah, right right. To the flat, buggy. flat ground. Yeah. I, yeah, the uphill. Yeah. <laughs> I had to haul that yeah, 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 every step was uphill. Yeah. Right there. It was step. rough, man. It was 400 yards uphill. <laughs> it was rough. Wow. Man. Luckily, yeah. it was a small deer. You know, it was oh, like, yeah. Yeah. like a oh, 60, 70 pound yeah, deer. 200 pound deer. That no, would still be down there. We'd have been screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to cut him up and haul him out in steaks. Yeah. Good Lord. I'd have to bring my grinder down there to make him. Yeah, right there the on creek. the spot. Yeah. If I'd have been that, I'd have probably remembered the creek if I'd had to help. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We won't forget that trail next time. So next year, we'll make sure we know damn good and well where every single trail is on uh, that I, place. I couldn't believe that. Next day, I looked and said, damn, there's a damn trail. Yeah. 50 yards. Yeah. <laughs> It made it worth it though. It made it fun for me. Yeah. It made me really earn that deer. You know it what I mean? Yeah. So I, li- yeah. I liked it. I didn't really, I loved every bit of it, honestly. Right. But yeah. All right, folks. Well, I think we're about to run out of time, anyways. But yep. 
we got to get you on again, man. We could literally sit here and just talk all night and have like five podcasts, but let's keep it fresh. Come back next time. Maybe talk more about them undercover store or whatever the hell we want to talk about, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. had some of them stories got deleted. We'll go where yeah. they Yeah, those are yeah. good stories. You had some good like busting people stories that we really have to revisit. Yeah, you we know? need to. Those um, were good. Dude. They were so good. Yeah, I, I, like are. I said, I'd love to spoil them, but we, we won't spoil them. Yeah, yeah. We but um, Badge, you got anything else, man? Appreciate you. Coming yeah. over here, Daryl. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah thank I you, thank you. It. Shooting it. I it. Yep. I had, had, had a long day. He even had me a nap. Yeah, we've had a long. We've all had a long day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. all have. I You've have. had a really long day because you yeah. were up before anybody because you had to drive here. Yeah, he had yeah. So you're, but, you look half asleep right now. In fact, I gotta, I gotta hit probably my third energy drink yeah, of the day. Yeah, you have energy. Yeah, we have to get some supper too because yeah, we haven't yeah. eaten in a long time. Yeah, true, true, yeah, true, true. But we'll figure yeah. all that out. Right. But yeah, thank folks. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you're following us, subscribe, liking all that good stuff, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>